All right, we're going to call. All set. Sorry, we're going to call uh, meeting to order. It is 703 Colchester Planning Commission, June 21st. First item on the second item on the agenda is consideration reserved for changes to the agenda items and order. We will probably do one here of moving the zoning map up in presentation. And then the next we have are comments and questions from public not related to the agenda. All good there. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're here for. You're for the East Lake Shore, right? Yeah. So we're not yet. Oh, no, no. This is for not on the agenda. Oh, okay. We're gotcha. This is totally different for Yeah. Yep. Nope, you're good. Okay, so now we're going to. Uh, our presentation from Kathy for the public feedback received at April visioning sessions for the East Lakeshore Drive rezoning. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, is everybody here at the, that April meeting where we had the keys on the board? I was not. Okay. Well, that's okay. All right. Um, we had, I should have brought the actual hard boards. First, I'd like to invite uh, Jake over. So I'd like to introduce you guys to Jake. Jake Hogan is a uh, rising senior at UVM, and he is interning with our office this summer. And he has helped us to synthesize some of the information we received um, from that meeting. So for anyone who wasn't here at that uh, April 3rd, 5th, we had a meeting. Uh, when well, we did a visual preference survey, we had a bunch of posters around the room and a bunch of sticky notes, and we asked people to provide some feedback on anything they felt when they looked at the various images. Now, none of these were from Colchester. They were from other parts, but they sort of represented what could or couldn't maybe possibly already does exist along East Lake Shore Drive. So we ended up at the end of that with Presents what you guys put on those notes, and there's a lot of the same images too. So if you haven't seen them before, you can see them now. Yeah. So um, I took all of the comments, and I, um, if anyone is interested in seeing what the actual comments were, there is a document of all of the comments. But I kind of condensed the information to make it more digestible. Um, so. Um, and so I, uh, there were a couple of major topics that uh, people put on the sticky notes for just about every uh, image. Uh, one of those was parking and traffic. Um, so for images like this, people um, were concerned about maybe cars backing on to East Lake Shore, um, maybe increased traffic on East Lake Shore. Um, there was also concerns uh, if images didn't show any parking. Um, some comments were concerned about, you know, where are people going to park, um, things like that. Um, and there were a few comments about walkability um, and biking, um, mostly uh, concern about uh, safety. Um, height was a big one. Um, so. The image on the far left was one that people, was a two-story that people felt was okay, um, whereas the ones on the far right people felt were much too tall and unsightly for uh, East Lake Shore. The one in the middle is interesting because um, the one on the right and the one in the middle are sort of similar in height, um, but it's really the narrowness um, that I think people disliked with the images, um, and of course that with the parcel sizes on East Lake Shore, narrowness would uh, come into it. 
Um, so a couple of the images were obviously commercial buildings. Um, and this was pretty divisive. There were some comments uh, where people were saying they'd love a little, um, you know, mom and pop ice cream shop to, uh, you know, meet up with members of the community, things like that. Um, but there were a lot of concerns about increased traffic. Um, you know, would people be crossing the street to get there? Would people be biking? Uh, is that safe? Um, and there were also a few comments of people expressing that they didn't want any more commercial in general. Um, so in terms of aesthetics, people tended to like the pictures um, where there was a kind of a camp or cottage style, um, low profiles that don't block uh, views of the lake, um, you know, just kind of a quaint, cozy vibe. Um, and the aesthetics that people absolutely did not like um, were uh, really anything that would block lake view, like tall fences, tall buildings. Um, the tall buildings that were most disliked were the narrow, skinny buildings. Um, and uh, in some of the more modern buildings, uh, there were concerns about not fitting with the character of East Lake Shore. Um, and also just very large, kind of grand, uh, almost McMansion-y uh, type styles. I, I'll, I'll add that I was intrigued by the comments about the fencing because I really, I didn't know what, what to expect and how people would, would sort of feel about this. So it was really informative, I think. I think you look at that building in the middle, I, I kind of knew how people would feel without having to put it up there, but I thought the fencing was, uh, was really informative. Um, so here's just a breakdown of the kind of different categories. So um, that was the only building that was universally liked. Um, everyone kind of enjoyed this building. No one really had anything bad to say about it. Um, yeah, and people, so, so these ones had a few negative comments, but mostly positive comments. Um, so, you know, people like the low profile. Favor? You go back to that picture, please. Which one? Which one? That one right there. I want Bob to see this picture, actually. That building right there is the most popular building of everybody like for the height of it and the aesthetics of it, for what we saw. So when you get us talking, you'll know what our, ha our happy place is. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Did you guys like it, too? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so these ones. Um, uh, the main concerns with these pictures were parking, um, you know, backing out onto East Lake Shore from the one on the right. The one on the left, there were some concerns about lack of parking, um, but overall people were pretty happy with the size and the aesthetic. Um, these ones, people, um, these ones were a little bit less like than the previous. Um, the narrowness uh, was really one of the main um, things that people disliked. Um, and also kind of the density, um, you know, you can see how close the neighbors are. Um, but overall, people uh, felt that these looked nice. Um, the one on the left uh, didn't get too many comments about height. Um, and then I think the next. So these ones were pretty divisive. <laughs> the, the ones people sort of disagreed on. So some people liked the style of this and thought it um, had a pleasant character to it, um, but the narrowness and the tallness of it um, was really not appreciated. Um, so these ones, like I said uh, previously, the commercial was pretty divisive. Um, the aesthetics of these were also um, pretty divisive, some people didn't like the ice cream look, some people did. Um, and yeah, overall, um, some people want little spots where they can connect with the community, um, you know, hang out, uh, but there are a lot of concerns about the practicality of that, the feasibility of that, um, given, you know, everything else. Um, this was the most liked image uh, that was obviously commercial. Um, 
but there are a lot of concerns about um, pedestrian safety, um, you know, if people are biking there, uh, if there's enough parking, if it would cause more traffic, things like that. So just as a reminder, this is the same building, but the view is taken from two different angles because I thought they were, they were different enough. And that's down um, Route 30 on Lake Bomazine for anyone who's trying to figure out if it looks familiar at all. Uh, so now we're getting into the ones that people really did not like as much as the others. Um, so this had some positive comments about the look, but mostly um, people didn't like uh, the character of it. It's too tall and narrow. And also there are some concerns about um, density uh, or um, multiple families, um, things like that. Um, the one on the left, the main thing is the parking. I don't think people really had an issue with the aesthetic or the size, um, uh, but I think the three cars uh, and the idea of those potentially backing out onto the road, creating hazards, things like that, um, people kind of uh, hesitated to accept. Um, and then the one on the right, the fence was a big issue. Um, some people um, noted that there wasn't parking visible, so people were kind of curious how that would work. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing for that was the fence. And then, so there were a couple that received absolutely no positive feedback. Um, so first among those is this uh, grand one on the left. Um, People uh, said this feels like it would be an Airbnb, um, which is something that some expressed they were, was unwanted. Um, and just in general, it, it felt very out of character um, for East Lakeside, um, yeah. And uh, the one on the right, uh, again, a very grand style, um, more concerns about the height um, and how the stories work, things like that. Um, the coffee shop um, was apparently very out of character uh, for the street. Um, concerns about traffic um, and increased commercial, what that would do to the area. Um, and then the one on the right was the most universally disliked. There were a couple of sticky notes that just said in all caps, UGLY. Um, and uh, again, the, the height and the narrowness um, was a major concern. I'd say for aesthetics, the, the narrowness and the height is, was the most common uh, out of, you know, across all of the pictures. Um, so no surprise there. Um, yes, yeah, so then th this board has, um, uh, you know, people were asked to put sticky notes on the bottom for what they think uh, potential um, new zone uh, regulations should be. Um, and then, I can't really read the top. We tried to give a little bit of a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I'll do that on the next slide. You can see yeah. where we added some things. Yeah. So you can see the uh, Lakeshore 1 zoning district has those, and the R2 zoning district has those regulations. And so, um, the suggestions that people Those are all had. current, just for anyone who's looking. Yeah, so um, for the lake side of East Lake Shore, um, three people said there should be a 20 foot maximum. Uh, two people said that it should just keep uh, current R2 uh, regulations for footprint and height. Um, and then there was one comment that said three story maximum, uh, one story below the grade of the road. You guys can see those okay though, right? Um, and so now for the non-leak side, um, two comments said that there should be a 40 foot maximum uh, for residential, uh, 15 foot uh, front yard setback. Um, and then there was uh, one comment that said it should only be residential use specifically. And then, and then these were just some general comments uh, that were left on the board. Um, three people said that there should be uh, something along the lines of mandatory off-street parking um, or 
uh, other comments just concerned about um, there being parking in general. Um, there was a comment that said uh, zoning should be done by stories rather than by height. Um, some people wanted aesthetic to be regulated, um, but then also people wanted aesthetic to not be regulated. Mm -hmm. So a um, little bit of division there. Um, but I think that is the end of it. Yeah. Thank you, Jake. You did a much better job than I could have. And I was here for that meeting, so I am very appreciative. Anybody have any questions on this particular synthesis before we move into what we did with it? When you were talking, when you were showing on the, like a little bit of information, like with um, the ice cream the places, all I can think of is the scoop. The cars are lying up. all around that place. I mean, is that the one you no drive in? You could do anything. Yeah. Like yeah. And then you'd also we throw around. Maybe you're going to divide it up a little bit. Somebody that wants to sell you know, some frames and some pictures and stuff in the shops. Also those were. Yeah. I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, do you want me to jump right into five? Or? Quick question. I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. I thought you'd oh, I'm step sorry. up and answer. Oh, yeah. I'm Phyllis Bryden from East Asia. Phyllis Bryden from East Lake Shore Drive. Okay, thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it, Bob, because I'm also supposed to be taking minutes. <laughs> I don't multitask with that many things that well. You do a um, great job. And I just... um, yeah, the little barn that everybody likes, would that be a 20-footer for height? You know, it's I'm close. going to, when we get into the dimensional stuff, come back to some of these okay. because... I think it, it definitely feeds into some of the, um, I, you'll notice I haven't closed it completely because. Yeah. Okay, good. It's not what's on my screen. Sure. Can I have a presentation though? Uh, maybe. Cool. Let's see. I'm never that work. Ah, thank you. <laughs> to the agenda. Okay, so there is a lot on here tonight, if anyone was looking at this agenda. So we, we talked a lot, you know, I think most people, many people are here to talk about East Lake Shore. Um, when we do updates to our regulations, we do them in what we call supplements. And if you ever look through the regulations, at the very back, it actually shows you what, what is included in every new supplement. So we are up to 43. Um, what we currently use in our regulations now, and this goes back a long way, it's not all just us, um, uh, is 43. This would be supplement 44. So it would include changes to, of course, the East Lake Shore area, um, the tables in the back, but there's also some proposed changes for uh, quite a few other items throughout the regulations that have come up through just things that staff have found, stuff that the plan commission has maybe talked about briefly, technical fixes, um, and suggestions from the Development Review Board as they implement the regulations where they have found text that's confusing or could be written better. Um, so it looks like a very long list. Most of the substantive conversation for tonight, for tonight is related to that East Lake Shore. I did try to put it up front, so if anybody wants to um, not listen to all the rest of it, you are free to, uh, to leave if you'd like. Hi. I just have a question. Sure. Uh, for the record, I'm not a voter yet. Yeah, tell who you are. And, uh, my name is Tom Bach, and Tom. Uh, I do own list on uh, South Asia. And I'm just curious, do either the Development Review Board or the Planning Commission have a uh, uh, design review subcommittee? We do not in Colchester. Okay. Um, that's something that could be thought of. I know the town I come from, and I know Manchester has a very strict design review. And, and how about uh, signs? Do you have a sign uh, law? Do you have a sign law? Yes, yeah, so the, the sign regulations in Colchester are included within the development regulations. Okay. In some towns, they're a standalone ordinance, but in Colchester, they're part of the regulations. Okay. Um, so that's how we work 
organized tonight. Um, there is a proposed zoning map that, as, as Rich had mentioned, that was kind of listed at the bottom, but we'll bring it up to the top to talk about where those lines are drawn when we talk about any new districts. So um, I want to give you a, just sort of a brief introduction. Most of you have probably had no cause to pull out a set of regulations and see what's in there. Uh, so when you look through the regulations, there's various chapters that are in there. Uh, we have mostly some of them having to do with land use, and there's some s standards that apply to all development. That really is what's used when we do a site plan or a subdivision. Um, and then some other performance standard stuff and then other pieces that might relate to other parts of regulations like wastewater and potable water and um, traffic um, and anything sort of engineering related. So that's, that's largely how those are laid out. Um, I've tried to list all of these, not pages, because pages would change every time you added an update, but at least a section where you can find these pieces that are in here. Uh, when I think historically, and I, I, I didn't quite flag this for the commission, uh, when we do sets of updates, I think historically they have been bolded and maybe italicized. Um, I personally find those very hard to read um, and to pull out changes very quickly. Uh, so I hope you don't mind that I've made them red and underlined, which is standard in, in many other areas. I find them a little bit quicker to find. So as you are reading through the regulations, anything that is underlined is new text. Anything that is struck through with a red um, is deleted. And anything that's green and struck through has been moved. So it still exists in the regulations, but has been moved to a different chapter. Um, <clears throat> I do want to focus on proposed changes for East Lakeshore. What I do want to point out as I go through these is there are a few areas where I'm sort of making my best guess at what I've heard. There are a few areas where there are pieces that are tied to what exists in the other two Lakeshore districts. So West Lakeshore Drive in 2016 was rezoned. It had a of conglomeration of quite a few different districts as I understand it uh, and the town created what we call LS1 and LS2 so and they they run the entirety of uh, West Lakeshore and they actually scoot around a little bit um, as, as I found out sort of talking to Phyllis a little bit more onto parts of East Lakeshore uh, I'm gonna pull up that map here Down the road and yeah, so there's there's a few properties there that are. Uh, I'm going to bring you here. So for historical context, everything in this dashed ready area here is Lakeshore One. Everything in this brown is Lakeshore 2. It goes a lot further than you can see here, but this map was created for the new area on East Lakeshore Drive. So it does sort of, so here's, uh, here's Bayside Park, right in here, and here's where the East Lakeshore starts. So those other districts do incorporate a bit here, um, and um, Phyllis, what's the name of this road here? Churchill Road. Okay, so that's about where that ends there. So no surprise, I think, for anyone in all of the conversations we've had, uh, if we are going to create a delineation here, we've talked about lakeside versus non-lakeside as being very different. We're calling them Lakeshore 3, Lakeshore 4. Lakeshore 3 is that lakeside zone. That is the sort of brown, sort of speckled area there along the lake. 
It does not extend across the road. I think technically it might include the road. The other side of the road was formerly R2. That's the area you can see here in the blue. So everything there that's in blue is currently R2 and that same blue R2 had applied or currently applies to the rest of East Lakeshore before it turns onto Bay Road. And as you can see, as you turn onto Bay Road, that R2 still exists for these properties here. So these are properties that have frontage along East Lakeshore. Some of them, as you can see, do run a bit deeper. There's some big parcels in there. Um, more above five acres than I would have thought through here. So we can return to that map, of course, but this is a starting point as we talk about LS3, LS4, LS, if I had multiple screens in here, I would leave them up for you. Um, LS3, Lakeside, LS4, non-Lakeside. So, question on that. On the zoning of a property that goes on both sides of the road, how does that work? Oh. My property goes across. It does? Yes. Okay. And have you had a determination yet as to whether or not that's technically one parcel or two? As far as I know, it's one. Our it's taxes, one. you would get two because it's a, I can only get one. one. So, yeah. So um, just as a question, because I could see that coming up, whereas if you, there's different guidelines on each side, <laughs> where you kind of would maybe did, can make a subjective. We didn't call. run into that on uh, LS1, LS2, did we? Because we did have a split zone going uh, across, and we made it one. That's. That's the first one. Oh, you crossed over to the other side with the zone? Where uh, um, the dentist was, Dick Maz is across the street. Oh, we had it, it was split. So we made it one. We extended uh, LS1 to make that all one. But we didn't have any that crossed the road. That were, that were one unit. Yeah, I wish I was more prepared to answer that question, but it's a very good question. It's a good thing to think about. It definitely is. Plans. I want to include that question in the minutes as well. Um, could you remind me of your name? Belinda. Belinda, okay. And I think I have your name on the mailing list, you so do. I could find your, <laughs> your last name there for the room. Thank you for that. Um, oh, and just, do you mind it, just, what's the address for you? 756. 756, okay. So I'll take a closer look at that, and I do think that's important for us to figure out as we write this. Um, thank you. So before I move out of the map, any questions or comments there? We can always come back to it. So forgive me as I skip a bunch of red. We will return to it, I promise. showing my mark up here. Oh my god. There we go. So uh, the first the first um, the first thing to think about when this was being written, um, so Lakeshore one and two already exist. They exist in chapter four, which is our general development districts. General development to Colchester means sort of mixed use and it varies among the, the sub-districts how much mixing of use happens. But generally speaking, most 
most of the subdistricts within general development are mixed use. They allow some residential, some commercial, sometimes in the same building, sometimes on the same lot, sometimes just some in the same zoning district. I've opted here to include Lakeshore 3 and 4 in the residential chapter, not in the general development chapter. So if you're, one, if you're looking at this and saying, why are LS 1, 2, 3, and 4 not in the same district? It's a recognition that Lakeshore 1 and 2 are mixed use districts. Lakeshore 3 and 4, at least at this time, are not mixed use districts. So those are included in this residential chapter. It does make them a little bit out of order. You get 3 and 4 before you get to 1 and 2, but I don't know that there's much we can do about that. Um, the strike throughs here, these strike throughs exist throughout the entirety of the regulations. They are repetitive. So where we reference the municipal plan, permitted uses, conditional uses, and the dimensional requirements, we've historically listed those things in every subdistrict. If you add it all up together, it takes up about eight extra pages. Uh, so I've struck them here but they are included in one place at the beginning of the regulations. So if you do see a lot of red strike through, it's not that it's not important, it's not that the municipal plan, that's the town plan, doesn't apply, it just means that we've moved it to a more consolidated place. Not deleted, I promise. Do you have a question? Go ahead. Shouldn't it have been green then if you just moved it? It was for one. So one of them got moved, but there was like 18 references, so the rest it made red. <laughs> yes. It's good attention to detail. Yeah. And would you mind making the presentation just a little bit larger? Yes, sorry about that. That would be great, thank like you. About four <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you. Now that I'm not having to scroll through as many, it's a little. There you go. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Lakeshore um, 3. <laughs> so Lakeshore 3, like other districts, has a purpose. This purpose statement, some of the sub numbers are the same as you might see in Lakeshore 1 and 2. When we talk about protection of the waterways, green infrastructure, but some of it is, and flood hazards, some of it is new, particularly for, in this instance, you can zoom in a little bit more if you'd like. Could also read it to you. Maintains the favorite historic cottage community character on the street facing and lake facing sides of these through lots. So that's 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 new language that's very unique to Lakeshore 3, this potential new district. Um, I'm not gonna go through each thing unless you guys want to slow me down and do it just because there's a lot. Lakeshore 3 is on the lake side and Lakeshore 4 is on the opposite side. Yes. yes. Okay. Sure. Want to state your name for us? Go ahead. Want to state your name for us? Ken Pusey, 756 you. East Lake Shore Drive. Thank you. So under item four, that looks like you're adding subjective regulation instead of sticking to objective regulation. Yeah, and, and that's to me that's very concerning because it's black and white. What is is something need to set back or not? Does something meet the building height or not? As soon as you get into aesthetics, someone likes it, someone doesn't. And I really, really don't think it's a good idea to start putting subjective language into these into the zone. Do you, do you it's under consideration. You're right. It's a discussion we're going to have. This is uh, the beginning. Yeah. So, just and I understand what you're saying. That's why it also says maintains. They've also done this before already in the Bay. This isn't new. It was done with the uh, Bay project years ago with the same language. And again, it's not hardcore. It's, it's still it's, concerning uh, to me yeah. whether it was done before or not. Right. So it, it's a flavor. You're right. Yeah, I, I want to second that. I, that was my concern Could you use your name for me, please? Uh, Esther yep. Sure. Who gets to decide what is that cottage look or and and, I, and in reviewing Jake, um, what Jake had earlier, you know, you had pretty much a split decision on the people who wanted aesthetics to be part of it and who didn't want aesthetics to be part of it, how we're landing on it, what turn number four. But yeah, I, I just think it is very subjective. 
Yeah. No, I understand. I understand. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. That's actually how why it's in there. Because the last meeting we had, it was a big discussion on what people are going to build and what it's going to look like. But how do you go from black and white to we'd like to maintain the flavor? You don't. So you leave it open wild, wild west. And the DRV might agree with you on that too because we have that discussion. Whatever we do here ends up at the DRV when they make their decisions. It has a, we get into trouble a lot with setbacks because we'll use the word uh, up to so many feet. And the question is, how much is good? 15 feet, 100 feet? And if we give you 15 feet, up to 15 feet, everybody wants 15 feet. So that gets, you're right, it gets complicated. The aesthetic part gets complicated. I, I I, we like understand that. Rock with all kinds of hazards. Right. This is subjective stuff. Right. So, anybody else have a, go ahead. Well, I, I just assume we'd be in court a lot. Put the court a lot if it was subjective. You know, because I, I just feel lawyers would just be arguing what the word meant or what you meant by that. So yeah. just to be preventative. So, so what, what, I'll, what I'll just share with you is that purpose statements in a, in a perfect world, you want your purpose statement to reflect the same purpose statement that's in your town plan, where you have the same, um, where your land use area is the same as your district. And so you would take that and town plans are very subjective in that way. Purpose statements, and this is throughout the, the Colchester regulations, are intended to give motivation, I guess I should say, um, description as to why the rest of the standards follow. Purpose statements are not um, used in a legal defense um, and they should not be used by a DRB. They're sort of an introductory chapter, um, if you're going to call them anything. They're not a standard, um, more of just a descriptor of what's to follow. Um, if the language is not what you want it to be, I would absolutely tell you to remove it. Um, I prof professionally feel comfortable in using purpose statements, generally, that are more descriptive. But if this descriptor is not one that you like, I would absolutely encourage you to remove it. I, th I feel like if you're comfortable with it, um, fine. you've seen probably this a lot and have experienced a lot, so I'm fine if you're comfortable. And just to be clear, I'm comfortable with the idea yeah. of it and the actual text of it is what I heard from the commission to date and what I heard from, from other folks. Um, but if the actual descriptor of cottage community is not what you wanted to say, I would tell you to remove it. I'm not so sure to remove it myself. I'm not against it. It's not, it is not black and white. And it's not, um, it's not in our regulations either. It is, a, it is a suggestion at the beginning for the purpose, but we don't regulate it anywhere. So that's, there's a big difference there. So if it was to go to the DRB, they really don't have a say in the aesthetics. Not unless you include that in your standards. Though. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it's a nice suggestion, which I, I think it gives you, if you're going to build it down in the bay, it gives you an idea of what people would like to see. Whether you choose to follow it or not is different. We, don't, we didn't put any legal status in here that says you have to do this. Isn't, what do you think? Uh, I agree. Hang on. We're providing a context for changing to the zoning language. I'm uncomfortable with item number four being there at all. Okay. Just to be very, very clear, I really don't like anything that's going to hint at we're going to go to subjective zoning. It just Everyone has a different opinion on whether something is nice in character or not. 
and I don't want the governing body to get into that. I don't want that body to have that kind of power and even having that in there that someone builds that in later, I'd like to see that item number four eliminated. Okay. What do you think? Well, I think we've gotten a lot of feedback from the community what's been happening on East Lakeshore Drive, and that's something that. Could you speak into the mic, please? I'm sorry. But we, I think that's a re, kind of a response to people's comments that we have to do something on East Lakeshore Drive. Uh, we saw a lot of cottages go down and kind of larger scale projects go up. Uh, and that's where we were kind of focused on, we got to do something about Lakeshore Drive. There was too many comments about it. I think this statement basically says we want to keep what traditionally was there, a community of you know, what was camps at one time, it's grown larger than that, but this statement is more of a purpose that this is going to be a community neighborhood. And the way it's stated maintains the, the favored history, maybe favored is wrong, but maintains the historic cottage community, that character of the, of the area. I think it's just a purpose. It's not telling you you have to do this. It's it's a purpose. Uh, if we put in there that this building has to have, you know, a square box with a gabled roof and two windows and a door in the front face, that's going a little too far. And, and we, we're not doing that. Um, I believe, I wasn't involved with LS1 and LS2, but I believe in the regs, we do have some more descriptive guidance on what's acceptable in those zones. That, there are some design standards associated right. with there are And we're not system. doing design standards. I, I, I didn't hear from you that you wanted to carry over. Right. right. No, we did do that for the other side, specifically on the right. parking so we, and setbacks. I know you're going to get into it further, but there is another area that gets more into um, more definition of what meets this requirement. And that may be where more discussion needs to happen. But I think this is being more of a purpose and it states the direction we wanted to keep Lakeshore Drive in. Great, thank you. Okay. You think, Bob, Sarita, whichever one. Well, I just, I guess I'm a little unclear about, I really want to, I, what I heard from people and my per personal preference is to try to do our best to preserve the historic cottage community. You know, to not have a six foot, you know, 100 room hotel on East Lake Shore Drive. You know, just, I, you know, just, I, and we heard it from a lot of people. It was, it isn't, we're not the ones that are deciding it. I mean, I thought that came out as the most, you know, off, you know, most uh, glaring is it, but at that uh, public hearing that we had that maintaining the character of that community was important to the people that came that night. You set up the whole exercise right. to have people judge stuff aesthetically. Right. If your goal is to avoid huge buildings, that can be done with objective criteria mm -hmm. that is easily interpreted legally as opposed to subjective criteria yeah. that is not. I'll caution you again, stay away from the subjective. So I, 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 I guess I'll shut up about it because Nope, that's all right. Well, that's I what feel we're here very, for. Very, very strongly about that. So we will get into the regs, which gets more into the details, mm -hmm. height, structure, that sort of thing. That will become more, and we do have opinions on that. We are going to restrict somewhere, ten feet, a hundred feet, but we will be restricting it. If it's part of that. Objective, I'm okay with it. Yeah. If it's subjective, I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? You're, you're, yeah, and you you don't like it because you're afraid that this opens the door. Do I understand yep. that correctly? So we you understand that we're we're flex here. 
this is a suggestion, but your fear is that this is number one, and then the next supplement we decide we're, we're going to yeah, step you're, into you're it. Just, I'll the tell you one thing, the history, the history of this town, I would be amazed. That's as close as we've ever gotten to anything, is a suggestion. It's happened before, like I said, the Mounts Bay Initiative on the other side, it was discussed, and the same idea was brought forth, but there's never been any regs on design review. Bob, what do you think? Agreed, and obviously your opinion is important to us, and we take everything you're saying into consideration. We also look at a lot of things and talk to other people, and we take your advice and your interest at heart. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Do you mind if I pause just a moment? I just want to get your last name on the record. P U Z E Y. P U Z E Y? Correct. Ken? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So it's still up for discussion. This is still public. I guess hearing. just one last note I would add on that is if you remove four, you will want to remove every purpose statement. All of these are subjective. When you talk about promote greening, that's subjective. When you talk about considering challenges, that is subjective. That is not a black and white standard. And I would, if you, again, if you decide to remove it because of subjectivity, I would encourage you to take a look at all of them um, and make that wholesale across the regulations. Mm -hmm. Can we see the first sentence? It's, it's up above, right? These are all listed underneath a state. Yeah. Do you need me to zoom in? Do you see it okay? Or? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay. Living in seasonal residence. Tim, just curious, where is your home in Colchester and how many other properties do you own? I would like to know this kind of stuff. I'd always find it interesting. I live in 756 East Lakeshore Drive in Colchester, and that's the only property in Colchester. Fair enough. Just would you be in the LS1? I mean, LS3 or the 4? Are you Lakeside? Both. Oh, you're in both? Yeah. Oh, you're the, okay, yeah. so you guys are getting your way across. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you'll have a lot of opportunities. <laughs> okay. We came, of course. We're not planning to build Good. an LS3, so. Yeah. You know, I'm I, curious, I, could you build on the other side? Yeah. No. no so it's straight, you're straight down. You want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, why would you? Why would you? Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Um, so, I wanted to flag, I've talked to a couple of you guys about this independently. Um, this language was carried over from LS1 and 2. I left it here as a discussion point. I want to make it clear that it is not because I am recommending keeping it, but I did want to keep it as a discussion point. So, as you may know, can you enlarge the policy? Yeah, I'm trying to just give it context so you can see what it's refer referencing to, mo to below it. Um, LS1 and LS2 have these green infrastructure standards. I'm gonna scroll down real quick so you can just take a look at them. Basically, there's this complicated model that the Regional Planning Commission and, and the League of Cities and Towns has where a bunch of, the engineer will put in a bunch of stuff. A, a basic homeowner really can't do it themselves. So you input this, tells you whether or not you've, you've done this. We've, used it for maybe two properties in the last five years that have, have developed using this. Going back up, this says, and I don't know the history of why this was included in LS1 and LS2 along East Lake, West Lake Shore. I have no idea. I tried to find it, I cannot. Maybe you guys have a better memory. Um, so there is this standard that says, and I've got it highlighted here, a lot coverage may be increased over 40% in accordance with subsection C. If a project is deemed to comply with subsection 306C, that's the uh, green infrastructure standards, lot coverage maximums, it says does, there's a typo in LS1 and 2, does not apply. So that says if you meet these green infrastructure standards, there's no maximum to your lot coverage, you could cover 100% with impervious surfaces. Hmm. That was an LS. Is that going to go on LS2? 
So, so I'm not recommend just just to to to. That was an Ellis too, right? So right. that would apply to you. Oh, right. Yeah. I want to. I want to yeah. <laughs> so LS1, this is language from LS1 and 2. Yeah, and 2, they both are in there. I, I, I can't seem to understand what sort of the goal was. Um, but That's I am flagging it for you as to whether or not you want to amend it, keep it, delete it altogether. I think because I believe, maybe Pam knows better, but I believe it's because they really wanted some aggressive growth. Along West Lake Shore? Yeah. You're going to have to yeah. back up, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, th I believe it was because they, we wanted, at that time, aggressive growth in that section. Oh, they wanted okay. to get the bay up and running again with more okay. commercial, more opportunities, not so much for East Lakeshore Drive, different flavor. Yeah. So. I agree. I, I think it was more for the commercial. Yeah. Than it was for residentials. Yeah, absolutely. So, but that wasn't specific because you're just saying, I think it was for the. I'm pretty so sure. Again, I have he to think. wins. No, no. No, no, not on this one. This is a. This was. Uh, what? No, but I'm just saying in general, it wasn't specific. You said we want to grow, and you said I think it was really cool. That's what. Well, put it this way. Put it this way. Put it this way. It definitely is for growth. There's no doubt. If you give you, if I give you 100% to grow on your property and you build it out, okay, you've got mine. growth. So that's pretty black and white. Okay. Right. <laughs> but that's only an LS. One and two, okay. so copying this over to East Lakeshore Drive, we probably don't want this. Right, because that's mixed use, right? That's a mixed use area. Right, you have you have more properties that, you know, we're still talking about two different areas. Yeah. You know. And that's why they're divided up so right. we can make sure that the rules don't go across the board. Exactly, you know, we need a starting point, and this is a good example of one that's probably not going to cross over. It would be no, this is one that I highlighted saying I, I wasn't too sure why it was in LS3 and 4. So Correct. Yep, so um, <laughs> Kathy, wouldn't the stormwater regulations make, I'm just curious, even when this was put in or now currently, wouldn't it be that you just can't be putting in, you couldn't build your lot out if it's an impervious surface? Yeah, so a lot of the stormwater regulations kick in at a certain threshold of land disturbance. Most properties under 10,000 square feet of disturbance, quarter acre disturbance, are not going to need state stormwater permits. Um, and I think what this, what this was saying is that if you can treat all of that on site using green or low impact uh, technology, you can build out. Um, and I, and I can only guess that the gap between 40% and does not apply is because it was really hard to find the right number. Is it 70, 80, 90? Um, I mean, realistically, if you're doing green infrastructure, you're not hitting 100% because you're putting in something green. <laughs> um, but it could go up to that in, in the current regulation. And I don't know if you'll ever want to revisit that in the future. Um, it's so hard to use 100% of an area because what do you do? Where the boundary lines that are supposed to be a couple feet away from your those neutral areas? Yeah, I think historically people have it because we have capacity on wastewater. Um, with a sewer line, the capacity may change. Um, yeah, that's, what, that's what we're adding into this also. Yeah. I mean, I would keep it flagged even for LS1 and 2. Um, it may have been a different discussion when you thought that sewer could really limit the coverages in those areas. Um, but we can return to that at a future point. For LS3 and 4 for East Lake Shore, um, I guess I would tell you that I'm hearing from you, you don't want it. Um, your options are to delete all of two. Um, you could provide some incentive for the green infrastructure by saying it goes over 40, but you put a different cap on it. Um, it really just depends on whether or not you want to incentivize that the green infrastructure, the, the stormwater treatment on site um, in any way. Does this include like if, if there's a property that you're old enough to stay within the footprint of what used to exist and now you can go over it? I mean, so it's not. I mean, you can limit it from 100%, but you can somehow 
have to wait in Maryland. I, I mean, I guess the, re the reason this is there is so that people could go outside of what previously existed? Is that yeah, I think that, so the green infrastructure standards aren't required, they're a bonus of sorts. So if you treat this stormwater stuff above and beyond using certain methods, you can increase your coverage on your lot. Um, so Peter was way ahead of us. Who was that? That's a really good question because I think that this has come up a lot and, and is obviously going to continue to come up with a lot of pre-existing homes uh, and foundations. So what those homes are grandfathered at, you know, given a vested rights, is for that footprint and for any approved coverage they may have. So if you've already had, or for more than 15 years have had, a parking area on that site, so you're sort of vested with those pieces. If you do rebuild your home um, and you do reuse that same footprint and you do reuse your parking area and then you say, I also want this other parking area now because now I've got a bigger house and I need more cars to come, you're not vested with those rights and you would have to meet everything in here. Um, so it's really the footprint piece that is your vesting right. Um, heights are not included in that and I know that's a conversation that's come up and um, is important to understand Rebuilds are not vested with those heights that they have now. They would be subject to the new, to the new regulations. Yep. Question. So I thought I saw up above a little bit about, you know, if a property's been more than 10 years, so like let's say old camp got torn down and it's been 11 years or longer, how are we going to deal with does it? Does that mean they can't build that back up? That's correct. Okay, and how do you track, like, how, you know, when that expires or? Um, so it's a variety of, of ways, either through tax records, through uh, aerial photography. Technology is wonderful. You can go on Google Earth and go back year by year and see what existed there. Um, it's not a perfect system. Nothing is. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not uncommon for the town to enter into agreements with people who are um, wanting to extend that 10 or have come up on it. Um, there are several that exist in the area, so I think the town has historically worked very close with homeowners to replace where it makes sense. I've had a huge building down yeah, within the it's 10 on the lake. Oh, it's 10 on the Yeah, so that's the, um, oh. mentioned this here, it's, it's, it's in A. This is listed as new language, but it is language that exists in LS1 and 2, and exists in some other areas where you talk about pre-existing non-conformities. So this language um, is in our regulations in quite a few places. Um, in other areas where you might have camps as well, um, Good Cell Point or some other areas. Nick at Bay, um, pretty commonly applied around the lake. Okay. Um, so direction um, on what you would like to do with number two? I think number two's gotta go. Probably, yeah. Number two. But the only thing that you that Kathy brought up is it would take away any incentive for the green infrastructure. Do we just take out the last sentence? Of that same thing? Yeah, correct. You're right. So if you want to do the green infrastructure part, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get uh, a little more. But if we take out just that part of the bottom, it would you to give some idea of what that little more is, right? The number, right, up to a certain number, right? 
just as we as we talked about. So we are in the standard section now, and yeah. we really is, want strong yeah. language. It, yeah. Would, Go ahead. I guess to me it would make a big difference in that extra coverage you're allowing in the law as to whether it's width that's going to block view versus depth that's not going to block view. There's a, I mean, yeah. from from my perspective. There's a much larger impact to allowing something to grow wider than to letting it grow deeper. You see the difference there? Yep. That would be in setbacks. So deeper, the good I, thing, at least on the lake side, is deeper almost never happens because of the shoreland protection overlay and the flood standards. And the same thing with going closer to the roads, too, as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So. That's not the case on the non-lakeshore side. True. How many properties in what space are we talking about? Can you show us on map that this section this would be that we're discussing yeah, at this I moment? Mean, I think that this is in here again, not having been here um, when LS one and two are written, I imagine that the goal is to incentivize treating stormwater. So the whole the whole purpose behind that section is about treating that stormwater, uh, which would probably not require a stormwater mm -hmm. permit, and so it's kind of above and beyond. How much you want to reward that is really up to you and you and it's a it's a it's an opportunity cost too, right? If uh, you know there's competing goods. If you do um, as as Phyllis has mentioned, if you do improve the stormwater quality on the site, maybe that comes at the cost of a different good uh, in terms of how much more you're seeing and on a small site. So there is a benefit, but there's also potentially a cost. And I believe that was the objective at the time when we were discussing this back in the day was on the other to side. yeah was yeah. to to make sure that the stormwater was taken care of and if we had to give up something we could at least get the stormwater taken care of better. Yeah, we left a little bit more green and be a lot less rushed to the water. I mean the green is going to go through the grass and it's going to be filtered through and it's going to be, you know, it's lush and it absorbs and it takes, you know, you leave a lot more of that. It was yeah, it's a natural buffer. You, you guys have the advertisement saying how here, the rain that runs out their roof and out your gutter, we've got a program, you can build these water storm or watershed things. If we leave a lot of the green along the East Lake Shore Drive, that's our, our natural, we don't, take, we don't want to take that away, we want to leave that. So whatever language you need to leave whatever we're saving in there now, let's do it. Right. This is one I fully put in the category of I have no professional recommendation other than to be clear. <laughs> I do think, um, you know, I, I always ha I'm always hesitant to do this because I don't want anyone to think I'm picking on their property. No, no, no. no. Um, we drive by these all the time. We so, <laughs> we you know, do. I hope none of you live right here. I just picked a <laughs> random one where I dropped my pin. Um, you know, so looking at this one as an example, maybe, you know, they've got pavement already in the front here. Um, I don't know how much of this on either side they might own. The trade-off, if you keep that, is that maybe they build over this green here, but they're treating their stormwater that's not reaching the lake. So, less green, stormwater treatment, you can come down on either side. Yep. Or somewhere in the middle, I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's definitely competing goods, I think. Well, eventually that whole thing is going to be replaced because it's being patched so bad and wrong. So the, the, the sun here, it only comes into play if you're going to use it for stormwater. If you are going to meet the standards. So that space doesn't necessarily have to be met. So there's these standards and the regulations that are down below here. Um, there's a model that's followed at the League of Cities and Towns, the simplified sizing tool for small projects. 
that shows that you can incorporate 90% of annual storm events. So if you meet that, if you do whatever it takes, I'm not an engineer, but if you do whatever it takes to meet that standard, you could then, in LS1 and LS2 right now, increase your coverage because you've met that standard of treating 90% of your annual rainfall. Um, the trade-off, I'm guessing, was deemed acceptable in that other area. Right. I'm hearing so far that the full trade-off is not deemed acceptable. You'll just have to decide if any trade-off is, is acceptable. The alternative is you just delete it and there's no... Um, the lots are a lot smaller on this side, a lot smaller. And the yeah. purpose is a lot different. And we're, we're also seeing individual um, builders who are doing this who I don't know are necessarily even going to take advantage of this green infrastructure. It's kind of complicated. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's so costly. On, on LS3 or LS1 or 2, that's. I think there's been two. I asked, I asked, uh, unfortunately, our staff, as you know, doesn't have a lot of longevity in our office. Uh, I understand in talking to our longest tenured one year staff mm -hmm. member <laughs> <laughs> that he's seen two. Yeah. Um, Are these one of them? Uh, zone two? Zone one and two? Or yeah, two? and zone one and two. So there was a home rebuild. I think it was actually on East Lake Short, um, but it was in the LS, LS1. I'm guessing that that's coming towards that end. But yeah, I don't know that he started construction yet. I think if somebody was oh. permitted, I, I can't remember the name. It's one of the first homes after you pass Bayside. Is it possible that we could leave this on the L1, L2 for a mixed use space and not put it in the residential portion for now? And then you guys can reconsider if there's a lot of stuff that's a lot of people requesting it in the future. Yeah, so I've made no changes or proposals to the to the other two. So right. this one more pretty much going to be residential, right. so to speak. And that's I think the way we want it. I think that's what we want. You've got your commercial and one in right, not towards me, but but you're gonna put that bike trail and everything in there, which will be pretty nice. But one and two are the commercial areas. So three and four should is 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 becoming to be residential if you have any percentages or numbers. I think that's those are appropriate and it fits. I mean, that would be our language for that's appropriate and fits residential. My only concern would be LS4, right? Where we have some pretty large sites, and the way the regs are now, they could be heavily developed, and that's where stormwater would really want to kick in. Yeah. And are those going to be attached to the sewer system? If they, if those big lots, like you're saying. They go way up to like five acres. I mean, if they build yeah. 20 houses up there, they're all hooked to the. That's a that's a great question. What I didn't bring is the sewer service area. Well, that's which, what I'm wondering because I keep which pretty it much aligns. It aligns with this, but next time I will bring a map that shows them yeah, both together. Yeah, because I keep driving up down to like, well, no, that says a court, so that court is not. Yeah. On so the sewer the sewer service area is not just what is directly on these lake shores. So it's the same properties that have that frontage, but that may be much larger. That's okay. So those are still in that service area. So does that increase our 289 houses that were included? Or no, and, and I'll get to that. Okay. I'll talk about density. Okay, great. Because that's a great question. So to Rebecca's, this is for LS3, but... LS4 has the same but, language. Right, yes. so you're right. That would be a good... You're right. LS4 is probably pro uh, proper. Still yeah, I have no problem taking it out of LS3. I don't either. I'm fine with it. So we're all good with taking it out of three, but four will be a different one. We'll, we'll get to four after. Anyway. So we'll take, so um, I hope you guys don't mind. I may just do it as we go. Sure. So we're recording this. Yeah, um, it's definitely one we can. Obviously, you'll see it again. What sure. color are you putting it in? <laughs> Just so we know where to find it later. Whatever it does. Um, actually, it won't, it, because it was new, it won't show up at all. Because it's not deleted from the current. All of this is based on the current adopted. So I think... Just, just so you know, though, to put this back in would be a whole nother supplement. We'd go yes. right back at it, have another discussion, public forum, the whole bit, to put that back in. So that's why we get pretty detailed right now. In, Having here is great. We're good. We're good. 
because it saves a lot of have a lot of headaches that people talk with us here. Okay, I think we got to a good solution. Yeah. So that's LS three. Um, the four is going to be quite different because you said there's a lot more land space. Okay. Do you want to jump to four on the same issue, or do you want to finish three? Let's finish three. But yeah. when the green infrastructure, the whole thing come out? Well, I thought so. It's not referred to anymore. But as I'm like seeing it. It seems to just apply. That's not my understanding of how it's worked in LS1 and 2. Um, I might recommend, I'm going to leave it in there to look at it closer. Okay. Would yeah. you like it to apply? I'm a little confused all by properties. it. It says green infrastructure, but yeah. it seems to be all about stormwater. Yeah, I think the, the name of it comes from the that tool that VLCT has. I don't think it's a town named. It's if that's the name of their tool. That's how I looked at it too. Because the green infrastructure is simplified sizing tool for small projects. It's a mouthful. Right. Um, so I guess my question to you is: Would you like that to apply regardless of incentives, or would you like to remove that requirement? Should stay, I would think. Anything that helps the lake. I mean, that's the whole thing. We did this. Yeah, I think it should stay. If somebody wants to do it. I mean, that's our idea, right? Yeah. Clean as much as we can. I take it out. I I am concerned about erosion. You know, in LS three. I mean that whole bank there. I'm I'm not an engineer. I'm not a water scientist. But yeah, I just saw what happened on Riverside Ave. I'm just concerned. I don't know if that's. I assume people are you know monitoring that. But I am concerned in that particular area about erosion. Um, so let me look at the. I haven't spent. So it looks like E might be a problem. Um, I'll ask you to let me spend some time with this yep. and come back to you. I'm going to leave it for now. Okay. So it would make it a requirement, but I have to look at the details here. It looks like E increasing lot coverage over 40 percent is one of the factors that triggers it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend time with that. Okay. Um, I hear that you would like to keep it, so I'm going to do that, but I'm going to make sure the language is clear about when it kicks in. We and have had a few erosions on that area, and they've been working diligently to fix another area that yeah. they've been working on. C yeah. I don't know how that's going to play into the role once we start tearing up for the sewer system, I'm just saying because the sewer system is going to be down the middle of the road, so to speak, that's what you guys had said before. So, you know, anytime you dig a big hole, it just loosens all the structure around, and that will include the three. And it's like three, so it's going to be really touchy because it's very close. Yep, sure. I mean, we, we voted for it, it's going to be great to have it in there. But I'm, I'm sure they've studied that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Okay, so we'll come back with that. Um, so again, more spaghetti at the wall here. Um, I take no offense to any changes. Building placement and design standards. This is just to give you something to respond to. Some of this, most of this, comes from LS one and two as a starting point. Um, I'm going to leave this up and scroll through slowly. Um, these are for new, expanded, replaced, or substantially remodeled buildings. Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting because I don't know whether there's any wording or anything in there. So, you know, when we built those four story homes on East Lake Shore Drive, everybody was upset for the first one, and then let somebody else build another one. But anyway, you know, it definitely it definitely ruins the aesthetic because 
should we allow those going forward? Because you may get this lake shore drive, lake shore drive, lake shore drive, lake shore drive. And then you're thinking like, that doesn't, that looks strange there from the water side and from the road side. So how is the wording up here with it? So, so a lot of that, and we'll get to that, exists oh. in those tables. Okay. So we'll get to that part. Can you turn that down? Yes. There's two of them over there. You just have to hit the, see the yeah, green light? Too. Hit yeah, that green light. Can we just turn it off? Yeah, yeah the green sure. light should turn it off. And I think there's a second one. Thank you so much. That one there. Great. I was quite comfortable. <laughs> it was nearly 80 degrees when we, when we got in here, so. Yeah, we got the windows up. That's good. Um, so, commissioners, um, again, I would encourage you to go through all of these one by one. Most of these come from LS1, which is the lake side on West Lake Shore, which I'd say, uh, you know, there, there are properties that are equivalent to the lake side mm -hmm. of East Lake Shore, but there's also some that are not. Um, remind you that I hope you are entirely honest in removing, editing, adding anything in here. Just so, can you, is, what is the regs on parking? I mean, when you either tear down and rebuild or redesign, it, are those houses required to have at least one parking? Two off? parking spaces. I thought two. I'm asking. There are yeah, so new construction spaces. requires two parking spaces. Two yeah. parking spaces. Um, but if they have, let's say, three, do they keep that or do they have to go to the newer regulations? Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It's very clear in our regulations, but historically, any impervious area that you'd had before that you can demonstrate you've had for more than 15 years, you would be allowed to keep okay. existing. Okay. You'll see there's language in here that I threw at the wall that talks about proposed areas. Do you want me to lead you guys through number one? Or just, just go through until you've got comments? Go ahead and start with I would say lead us through. Yeah. yeah. So again, these yeah. are things. These are. This is text that exists in Lakeshore One. That's the lake side of West Lakeshore. Um, to the maximum extent feasible, buildings are designed to fit into the natural terrain and minimize any change in grade on the site. Buildings are located near the street with at least an entrance readily accessible and connected. I believe that the intention of this is because there's there's could be um, temptation to focus everything when you're building on a lake to look at the lake and that's your preferred side nobody can blame you for doing that um, but in doing so you might sort of create a back end or rear end of a building that faces the street and so i i believe that some of these standards were put in place so that the public doesn't have to look at the rear end of a, of a building Can you just go back one, one number three? All sides of the structure shall re receive design consideration front sides and rear of the building shall be attractively designed and articulated to eliminate large spans of blank exterior wall. I really like that one. <laughs> I do, I really yeah. like it. I just, I, I bothers me to see houses without even windows that may not be used, but just a blank, you know, a huge, expanse of a wall without anything breaking it up and I you know I do think we need to consider what those houses look like from the lake as well as from the road. So, yeah, so that's why it's in there. You don't like that one's there? No. It's, it's got a door. Yeah. It does have. No, go it's ahead. Like a bird house, I like. Go ahead, you're ready. Yeah. Your, your aesthetics are forcing someone to adopt a structure that is less fuel efficient in heating. Uh, windows are a huge source of loss of heat 
So your code that you're putting in place. I, well, I'm not putting anything in well, place. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> I'm just you're sharing my opinion. Yeah. That's all. What you're suggesting is forcing energy inefficient. Yeah, and that's a real. That, that's a good point. You know, that is a good point. It is. Yep. And should be taken into consideration. Okay. Thank you. There, there are state. It's not a code. It's not a code. The um, RBS. The residential, residential building energy standards for yes, construction. Their standards. Right. That we that all housing have to meet. And then there's the commercial one that where all commercial buildings have to meet. And that's where um, fenestration and, and wall percentages are addressed mm -hmm. and covered. So it's mixed over there. It's residential real business. Oh, I was just saying thank you that uh, both sides of uh, West Beach or Drive um, are mixed residential and business. Uh, commercial yeah. units. Yeah. So, yeah. So. And a lot of people, except for the, the houses with it, from the being beyond, so to speak, are, um, there's no water view or, I mean, the businesses or anything like that. There. I mean, they're just, you just see the front of them. So it's, it's mixed, so you're right, there's a lot of stuff. Good. Yeah, go to four. We can take them individually or as a whole? Take them uh, either way, works. Time. Mass of the structure broken up by incorporating visible changes in the wall plane and roof form. <coughs> Traditional roof lines encouraged. Type, shape, pitch, direction should be considered. Flat roofs are not permitted. Seems like a big one to chat about. We can build anything. We still want to build something nice. Either way, in the end, we have a lot of buildings that, unfortunately, are built that are not nice. When you think with that much money invested, people would want something that's kind of nice, but we've seen otherwise. Especially so we have to start somewhere. In a, I like this idea. It's not, it's not, I know it's not exact design review, but it is a direction. Mm -hmm. There's one strong statement in there that I would like to get you on the record of liking or not, and that's about the flat roofs. Yeah. In Vermont, that's not, that's, that's very, it should be unheard of. <laughs> you know, because you all that stuff on a flat roof. And yeah. Whoever builds that kind of roof it is a firm or not. So this would be very nice, but yeah. Just not practical. There's a fair amount of businesses and buildings of that structure, especially in box stores and stuff, that build flat roofs. Yes, they do. The rubber and stuff is much improved, but I agree. I think it's kind of scratching your head, but and I agree that I don't think flat roofs make much sense. But that's also a way for them to limit their height without putting a peak there and do something else with that extra five, six, eight feet that they're not putting a pitch through come back five. To that. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> because that is exactly a concern that I I'd raised privately with, with Rich that I'll talk about more publicly. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of torn on this one because hmm. I think done in the right way, a flat roof might work. But um, I, I think the first sentence kind of says it's encouraged, but I think it might be a little too strong to say flat roofs are not permitted. Well, let's see what Kevin Ann has yeah. to say about this in her presentation. <laughs> we'll go from there. Driving very slow here. The traffic doesn't go that fast anymore. It's 27 miles <laughs> yeah. It is working. <laughs> It totally is. Yeah. Oh, good. It totally is. I have all the guys that are so used to driving so fast, riding everybody's rear end. It's just terrible. And I was then wondering. They pull over the little, old, you know, the people pull over, and oh my gosh, and then they let them go by. But you know, on the most part, oh, that's not flat. Okay. No, it's not. But it's hey, that's my house. You know. Is it your house? No, that's that's Nikki and Jeff's, but mine's the gray one. 
But, but I hear so many compliments about it. So yeah, that's oh, sort of why a, I zoomed to it. It's a great house. I wanted to make sure it was structured very well. well. It's structured very well. But that one doesn't need, you know, the, the whole thing about a gabled, hipped, or ga gambrel. Yeah. That one's more like a shed. Yeah. Uh, different angles, which. It's a light, it's, it goes back on a lot. It's a striking house. I really wanted to put this in our visual preference yeah. survey, but I tried not to pick anybody. Yeah, that's right. They wouldn't yeah. mind. They would have said, oh, that's our, that's, Who lived they're there. great people. I, I just didn't know if anyone liked it as much as I did. Yeah. But. And, and also, like you were saying, the sidewalks are going to go right in front of our houses, all the way up to, uh, up to your development. So. so there wasn't a structural reason that you said flat roofs are not permitted. No, so, so this language aesthetic. had already existed. Yeah, I believe it's an aesthetic reason and not at all structural. Yeah, I think it had to do with another level of the house being built as well. Instead of putting a gabled roof, that loses you some space inside. You put a flat roof, which gave you an extra chunk of living space. Yeah, I mean, typically you, when you see people include them in regulations, it's because they're thinking of the worst case scenarios. They're thinking of the, the Dollar General stores and the the one-story CVSs and even the bigger big boxes, but even the smaller big boxes, when people think about flat roofs, that's what I think comes to mind for them. And I think that's why it, it ends up in a lot of regulations. Colchester wouldn't be unique if you adopted it. So this but, is a carryover from LS1 and 2. Yeah. Back to where it's mixed, mm -hmm. just okay. Yeah, because the shopping center, I think, has a flat roof. Doesn't it the shopping center? I think a lot of those do. Yeah. So those, Maybe. so I think that's, we were trying to avoid that kind of a look. Yeah. So, um, but it, it, you know, I, I was put in the category of I have no, this is you, <laughs> no professional advice on this one whatsoever. Yeah, this is two stories. That's a, that's mm -hmm. perfect. Um, and that would be an LS4. What's that? That's LS4. That that's is LS4. Well, actually, it's actually, no. technically, it's LS2. Two. Uh, that's it's two? two. It's right at the end of two. Oh. Yeah, this is the very really last property. Oh, okay, gotcha. You it stops get. right yep. at Church Hill. Right? But for some reason, I was thinking it was a flat roof just because it's so modern. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's not. Yeah, yeah Matt built that. Thank you, Matt. So, anyway, yeah. uh, let me go back to the regulations here. Anything you'd like to change? Keep, delete. Uh, pretty strong statements, again, at least in the very last one. Uh, the others are sort of recommendations, but wouldn't wouldn't prohibit you from doing something different. The very last statement is... Are we still under number four? Strong, yes, yeah. four. Okay. So you're definitely saying flat roofs are not... Um, well, I think that's what we're talking about, right? I know, I'm just thinking. And we haven't got to a height. We've not got to height, and so, we will want to talk about that. Because that will definitely make a difference in the Because flat. of the way we measure height, yes. They wanted the uh, story and a half. So if we do that, the flat roof won't work anyways, if you want to gain. Right. Hmm. We could also think about it. We could talk about it again at the next meeting. Okay. No one's really building one-story houses anymore anyway. And you guys are getting your permits. I haven't seen anybody building one story. Calvin, two and three, four. It's true. Yeah. I don't think that, I don't think the new era anybody's building one. No. So can they come back? Yeah. We we just see a few um, people who are who are thinking to more of their later years who are who are doing single stories. We do see some. Yeah, but it's not as common. Yeah. The cost per square footage is a lot higher. Yeah, it, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's probably it's worth it to it raises the cost, but there's some, still some desire. Yeah. I'm just, I would find it helpful to have some visuals. You know, just, you know, this is what this would look like. This is what this would look like. It's just would you like to me, see some visuals of? Of like flat roofs that look nice. That look nice? Yeah. yeah. Or just some of these features, just, you know. Uh, yeah, because you're making it up in your mind and you're thinking storefront or the, yeah, it's hard to. Yeah, it just would like, I'd love to see what we'd all like it to look like in the end and then work backwards. Yeah, build, build us the East Lake Shore Drive. 
three and four ones had it that were you know, just built. I mean, in a model. You must you must have examples of like this is what this would look I, like or this. I could. Is, what yeah. I would caution you though is that without a lot of language to go with it, oh, you're I'm not, not necessarily yeah. going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not saying without language. I'm just yeah. saying from my uh, yeah. Here, just to understand, this is what we're talking about, and this is what it would look like. I would so find guys, it I don't want to create more work. You have feel it. strongly about this now, or do you want to return to it? Think about it. I just have a hard time when you say you're not permitted. So I just, yeah. I just, mm -hmm. I can just with you. No, I don't want so to. Ellis one, Ellis two says discouraged. Does it say not permitted? It says I'm discouraged. <sighs> okay. Oh, just okay. That helps. Because I feel like if Rebecca feels like there are times when it looks attractive, you know, then why would we want to not permit it? If it would look okay and within the culture and within the character of um, the area that we're talking about. Mexican Derby. Are you ready to So right it? now I think we'd want to at least change it a little bit. We can come right? back to it. Yeah, you want to come back or we could at least put in that word discouraged. Discouraged. The start. Mm -hmm. Not discouraged. There you go. Do you still want to come back to it? Or do you want me to mark that as sort of your I'd like to come back to it a little bit because I've got questions about again whether that was put in there to stop different heights being changed across the frontage of the lake or the other side and why we started with that. Just a little more research in my life. I think it's really just about what people view as a residential structure versus not generally, but so change to discourage for now. We'll come back. Um, so more guidance, I guess I would I'm say. Number five, this is just me, this is bothering me. There's, I don't think there's anything Can known as a corner trip. This is supposed okay. to be trim. Trim. <laughs> Thank you. Um, despite the spelling, is it, am I, how do you feel about it as a, I think it's in keeping with number four. Yeah. So the way I would read this if I was doing development review is that the, the first part has to be met with at least some of those elements. That you have to have something where the second part about architectural heritage is just encouraged, but you have to have some feature. You can do it as a dormer, trim, awnings, porches, uh, but you should have at least some of those. So if I was reviewing this, a new house for compliance with this, I would be looking for at least a few of those and not looking at architectural heritage. Whatever that means. I guess I don't know what it means. And I would change the word includes to your buyers. Um, I think it's... It's the way that the, to demonstrate that it includes, I think it's, it's the run from the, the start yeah, so of the. Their designs. Change your semicolon to a period. That is a weird deal, I have to admit. Associated with Vermont's architectural heritage. We can remove it altogether. You know, that's too much. I don't know. I, mean, I would be fine with it. I think it comes, it comes from the other one. Yeah. Again, the other one is definitely built more for the commercial. We did not want to get into big blocks. And this one here is a different world. Would you like to delete that part? Yeah, I think so. Right. What, the, the yeah. all of number five or just that one? That right. The second part, starting with traditional yeah. features. Yeah. I think that'd be enough. I yeah. think we oh. don't, what we don't yeah. want to see is a little square box with a door and a window. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first part addresses that. Right. Would you like to remove the second part? 
Sure. Reminding me to get to LS4 to make the same change. Uh, landscaping or similar features shall be provided that will add. I think there's some grammatical work that needs to be Who's going to provide them? Shall be provided? Who's going to? Yeah, there's some. This is a copy, but it, there's some grammatical work that needs to be done here because, okay. again, if you follow to demonstrate that, okay. and then you say shall be, it doesn't work. Um, so, grammar aside, um, if again, if, I, if I'm working in the office and reviewing this, I'm looking for landscaping. And if it's not landscaping, is it a fountain? Is it columns? Is it something above and beyond the building design? I think it says similar features so that you're not stuck with just a, a landscaping feature. But. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, feedback, move on? Just like when it says pleasant, I think it gets back to your point. I mean, what does that look like, a pleasant street? I mean, a pleasant streetscape to me probably looks very different than a pleasant streetscape. I mean, do you need more detail, or is there somewhere that says this is what needs to be included to achieve a pleasant streetscape? <laughs> Would you, uh, do you have a recommendation? Um, well, again, I keep going back to the character. We could stop at visual interest? I don't know. Could stop at visual interest. We could stop at provided. Well, you have to reword this one anyway. I like yeah. visual interest. <laughs> yes. I like that. Okay, so we could do, since we're live editing, delete that part. Yeah. Yeah, please. Okay. You, you guys go over the plans. If someone comes and presents their building, you look at all of these things. I mean, you look at all these things. You so know, if it's, it's, if it's not, if some of these are included, then that's fine. But if there's some other things that they've got that you're not happy with, and it's not along the same lines as this, then they redo the plans. I mean, so, I, I mean, everybody's going to want to build something different. They're not all going to look the same. Do you want big trees there? No, blocking on the view. The, the field stone, the brick, the granite, mm -hmm. the Peter's got all that in his place down there. I mean, those are all. The DRD, the yeah, the, when we're done, they will pick this out. Right. Yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so again, these ones. They're holdovers from what you like for LS1. You don't have to like them still. You don't have to like them for this district. Yeah. But I wanted to give you a starting point. Yeah. Um, Again, because that, it's the same idea as before. We are talking about commercial on the other side, and this is now residential. Yeah, and these are from are LS1, that? which is very limited commercial, yeah, I guess very, I would say. Exactly. Like marinas, there's only very specific things. Yeah. It's not as much as like the non lake side. Yeah. So it's close, but not the same. I, I don't even know if we need anything. Thoughts for, on seven? For, yeah. We already got visual interest up above, and this goes to break it down a little further. These are visual. Keep any, delete all. Um. This is again all encouraged. Right. Not I wish you'd take wooden shingles out though. Yeah. <laughs> you would not? She, she you would. would. You would. I would. Yeah. Um, they're very high maintenance. Yeah. They're a fire hazard. Expensive. expensive. Not even. Before I delete just that, are you thinking <laughs> of deleting any more? Um, let's see. But I. Accelerate. Let me start with that. Courage. We could always keep going. The only other thing I had with that one was about the roofing. I think you had it limited to, to those. Yeah, and again, these come from LS1. Please, yeah, know. please know that I take no ownership or, or professional recommendation with keeping this. I just wanted to give you a starting point. Yeah. 
this look at because again I think it kind of creates some um, you know parameters on how we're going to get to maintaining the character of East Lakeshore Drive. You know, and just I think it just emphasizes, you know, that um, we want to look at what was there before, you know, and try to have that have new or whatever mm -hmm. fit in. So it's not like something just like I think now when I drive down East Lakeshore Drive, it's you know it's just surprising to me that how different it looks with the new buildings. You know, it just felt like someone just didn't even look around and say, like, I wonder how this would fit into this architecture. They're racing to get them in before. The what? They're racing to get them in. I know. They're racing to get every, I mean, that's what Colchester's always been about. They're always saying, yeah. oh, just do it, say whoops. Yeah. Colchester has a name for it. I mean, some are nice, surprising. but some are just like, it yeah. just doesn't, just glares, it's glaring to me how it doesn't seem to fit in with that whole neighborhood. Well, that's what we're fighting for because everybody, um, everybody has their own flavor and taste and everybody's got their own ideas and, you know, people, people do what they want to do where they want to do it and because they want to do it. There's no, there doesn't seem to be set guidelines sometimes and we've missed a lot of it so far. So that's what we're doing this today so we can try to catch up with this. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have to do is we have to work with what's there, you know, so, yeah. I mean, we're, we've got to not, we're not going to get our wish because they've already messed it up. So what we have to do is we have to come from our wish mm -hmm. to meet them in the middle and they, yeah. we've got to make a blend. So yeah. with adding all this material, we are trying for a blend, but if somebody gives me too many, too many options. With these oops, oh, whoops, oh, I added a few, oh, whoops, that's okay, oh, look at all the stuff I added with you. There's so many, you can add, I, I cut out four little houses and say, take, you want to build here, pick one of the four. <laughs> one, it's all designed, <laughs> which one you want, really like but you want to you know, I mean, <laughs> contemporary, <laughs> your <laughs> granola, <laughs> your, you know, you know, stuffy, your this, I mean, pick one of the ones and we'll get them all in. Sorry. Yeah. No, I don't think we would. I hope I'm not being too pushy. I'm just keeping an eye on the time for you. No, yeah. I know. I'm sorry. Um, All right. Number seven. Number seven, delete, I think. Delete. Change. We just took the wooden shingles out. We took the wooden shingles out. I think it's, again, it's encouraged. Take anything it's what, else out that you want. It's what we're thinking. Yeah. It would be nice to have. But again, this is not. This one is entirely encouraged. If I was reviewing, if I was reviewing a building that came in under this, I'd just be looking to see that there was, you know, I see different, so I'm looking for probably the most minimal variety at least. Are they showing me more than one thing? Um, as opposed to full vinyl siding on four sides. Right. I probably would say you're not meeting this criteria, but I think there's a pretty low bar yeah. for meeting it. Yeah. I think so too. That's what I'm looking at if I'm in office reviewing it. Right. I agree. I don't want the cookie cutter homes. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want that. But uh, just, just, I don't. It's an aesthetic, I think, that I'm looking for. Yeah, and this so gives we, you uh, the we idea. Keep this. Yeah. Without the uh, yeah. hammer. And again, if what I'm looking for, what I'm reading from this is that there's some variety, whether it's through texture, color, material, something. You've taken some of that and you've given me more than one of, of it. Yeah. Right. So okay. I think we're good. Um, this one, this one I wrote by, based on feedback. This is again spaghetti at the wall. It's, um, I'd like you to spend a lot of time on it. Um, this is something that I thought represented what I've heard, but again, I will have no offense whatsoever if you think there's a better way to include it or to exclude it entirely. Um, I'm going to give you some time with that. Can you guys see it or would you like me to read it? You see it. That's not both one and two are very well read. <laughs> Sorry? I think one and two are both very no, well read. I don't know. I don't have a question, so I just... Go ahead. So under the E1 section with the parking, is there any thoughts to regulating something, say, someone parking very large houseboat on the LS3 side? Very <laughs> large. <laughs> How do you see that? I mean, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that at all. What do you mean? Maybe they live there. That's their. They got ten years. 
I'll come back to that one. Okay. <laughs> Is that in a different section? <laughs> um, so I think that this, it gets included here because we're talking, well, I shouldn't say that. I've not researched that property specifically. If that is considered an expansion, so what this is meant to address, again, if that's always been a parking area, they're entitled to keep that as a parking area. If that's become a new parking area in the last 15 years, they're just surveying it. They're going to build the house. Then it's a violation. If there's going to be a house, they were they were doing the today. Like yeah. Sorry. So my, my question is that house where that house vote is, how many years has it been since there's been a house at that site? Yeah, so I can come back to that. I don't want to address that specific property because I haven't done the research on it. Um, That's fair. I, on this one though, I'm on number one, it's been talking about backing out. How do you do that? There's so many properties already that they have to back out. So how, what would happen? So this is new ones. So this says if you already have this property, and, and again, I, there, there may be better language here. This is something I threw out there for consideration. Um, if you already have a property, you've got your little parking area, no matter how terrible it is in the front, but you've had it forever, you, you've got to park two cars on site, that's where it is, okay. Um, if you come in, and, and without naming the address, um, we've had at least one property owner who's recently come in, um, partially because in the last year they've added a new parking area on the side of their house that they've never, it was always grass, they came in to expand that partially legally, but didn't include the portion that they've, they're using. Um, this would apply to a property like that. Okay. They already have the two spaces in the front, not great spaces, mm -hmm. but they have them. They would want this new parking area on the side. That new parking area on the side is about the depth of a car, about 18 feet. So we would probably tighten this up with uh, a regulation that relates it to a parking space. So we use a depth of about 18 feet for a stall, uh, eight to nine feet in width. If their new proposed parking area is this area where you pull in and then have to back out onto the road, this would allow us to say no. This is not a new parking area. You cannot navigate that without backing onto the road. Can you back in the area? Well, that is my point. I do believe. But nobody does. I do believe. I do believe in Vermont DMV laws. You're not supposed to back out into a main thoroughfare. You're supposed to back into your parking space. On a state road, right? Uh, any exactly. Lakeshore Drive, anything like that. You're not supposed to back into a main drag. You're supposed to back into your parking space and pull out. If you're backing out and you cause the accident, you're in fault because you have done something illegal. So. This is just kind of. I don't know. I don't know how illegal it is if you're backing out your driveway and the cars are right down there and they're going 55 miles an hour. It's you're still not legally supposed to be backing out into a main thoroughfare mm -hmm. from a private road. That is the law. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not saying that this is going to prevent a lot of that, but I think what it could do is prevent our enabling. Enabling from of prepared. that. Um, you know, I. I don't know if it's perfect, but I think it's it's something to start with. Um, and you could also talk about whether or not you know people have new parallel parking, what that should look like. But I I would like to be in the position in our office to be able to deny anything that forces people into or, or predominantly maybe not force because maybe people do back in, but um, I think that's pretty rare to see. But pretty tough on, on that road, road too. It's, yeah. yeah, it's still it's tough, tough on that. I think we have a common. Do that. Oh, yeah. Sometimes no, I don't. That's for sure. I agree. I, yeah. So you know, this is my what we heard. You know, and you saw in Jake's presentation, parking. It's a huge issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to gloss over it. Yeah. I don't know if this solves, or even starts <laughs> to solve, but I think that there. We have to start the conversation. Yeah. About I parking. I definitely would love to have a way not down back out of the road. Even pull up and have to back in. I know they do it, but it's so tight down there. Mm -hmm. There's so many properties you can't do it. So. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And again, this doesn't stop anybody who already has that space. That's right. right. That's right. They're already there. For better or worse, right. it doesn't fix that or stop that. So if, but, so I, oops, when you're ready, yeah. I have a so if, if they've got a dwelling and they end up having um, 
building increased and then they rent out the upstairs or downstairs and they just have two parkings. I mean, he and she lives downstairs and where are the people that are going to be living upstairs or renting upstairs or being, being upstairs? So are they doing that legally or not? <laughs> you see, they live in Colchester. Uh, so anyway, so they're doing it legally. So, so if saying, somebody I'm were... Just in general, I'm not saying I don't yeah. know anybody's doing that, but I'm just saying, you know, um, then they can't have a B&B. Yeah, so there are, parking, there are parking requirements associated with new units and ADUs, accessory units. So there is a parking standard, oh, although okay. uh, state legislation reduced the accessory ones down because they found that they were somewhat discriminatory. Uh, so I think you only need one now for an accessory apartment. Well, if they move the boat <laughs> and they don't build the house, we can rent parking. They, they, people can any, walk. Any <laughs> thoughts on one? You want to noodle on it? Do you like it? I like both of them. I yeah. kind of like So them two too. is a holdover, just to yeah. clarify. I know it's a little tough to follow. Two, just to clarify, is a holdover from the other lake shores. One is brand new. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think exist. it's good. No, I think it's, it's good. good. I, just, I like it. I'm all for it, actually. I can't do it. You're going to go across the street to your neighbors, I guess, and figure out a detail with them. Okay, I'll leave it. You can always provide more comments at a later time. Yep. Um, LS4, um, I have to tell you, I, I, again, this is sort of, um, I took LS3, copied it, lightened the language just a little bit. Um, I don't know that it reflects all of the differences that exist between the two, but let's talk about those as we go. Um, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. Anything on the purpose? Okay. Uh, four, we talked about for LS, or not four, I'm sorry, B2. Lot coverage associated with green infrastructure. You guys deleted that for the lake side. Did you want to keep it or not? I agree district. with Rebecca on that one. Larger properties, more green space. Say that again. More, uh, there'd be larger properties involved. Yep. So more opportunities to take yep. care of the stormwater. Yep. I agree. So you want to delete it? No. Not for us. So this is a, this is one that would allow them to go over 40, all the way up to 100. Well, how can I go up to 100 with the setbacks? Well, I guess I shouldn't say 100. So lot coverage maximum is on apply. So whatever they can fit. Right. In light of all the other dimensions. Right. They still got to do the parking. They still, they still have to all the set. Parts. That's really where you see it. You're going to see it. You're going to see bigger parking areas. Right. I don't know if that's what you intend. They're still going to have to come up with saving the stormwater. That's going to take well, some Well, lot space. coverage may be increased over 40%. That means if you're, you know, yeah, throw a number out there. Yeah. They're already at 40%. You could increase it 10% more. That's 40% of 40%, right? Yeah, that's the first part there, yeah. Okay. But the second part says that they don't apply, so you could go to E. Right, so I, I think the second part, since it's not commercial, right. I don't think it really applies to residential. I think we want to keep it as green as possible. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So you're thinking of removing that part? That part. If, a project, if a project is yes. deemed starting from there. That's what I'm looking at. So if you do that, I would encourage you to give some threshold because it does say maybe increased over 40. But then it seems a little bit open ended. Would um, you like to put an upper threshold? 50. <laughs> I don't want to increase it at all. I mean, a priest up, a priest, you know, I don't know. So the lot coverage, the lot coverage for that well, district would be 40%. This is saying if you meet all of these, if you meet all of the green infrastructure stuff, you can go above 42, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. This right. is on LS4 side where the property is big. If there's more opportunity, 
to address stormwater. On the on the LS3, like there's no room. There's no room yeah. to do any of that. I thought no. we were talking. I thought this was three. No, we're on LS4 now. Oh, okay, so yeah. four. We're, we're at five four. acre properties that go back. Okay, then they could do increase. Or so I think we need to give that one some more thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's it. So I think more. what I'm hearing is you you don't want to have no maximum. Is that pretty? Does that seem fair to say? Yes. Yeah. But you may potentially be open to something over 40 if they can meet their stormwater treatment needs. Yes. Yeah. So I am going to delete the second part. And do we want to leave this, put a ceiling on it at some point? Right. Too? 70, Does 80, that mean that like, yeah, if definitely. someone had like a three acre lot that could all be blacktop? Yeah, there's no money in that, Sarah. They won't black tell them. Well, yeah, no. There's no I don't know. know. They just don't want to look at a lot yeah. of. Yeah, that's true. That I'm just but it'd have to be all green. So we've got to we'd have to take care of the storm. It's water. a commercial parking lot okay. for all of the other people who have. There you know. go. <laughs> are we going to park the garage back there? It's parking on the side. Um, uh, while you're here, Kathy, do you need to change the reference to 4.05F? Because that's into. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to change it. I'll just highlight it so I know to change it later. I think I got changed to C. Got changed to three point. C. Yes, three point something. Yes. So, <coughs> thank you. So I will return to that. So, uh, you guys want to noodle on that one? Think about it. Um, find some appropriate. I I can't. Yeah, because there's so much difference in the properties. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Four. Mm -hmm. yes, there are, yeah, 40% of a small lot might not feel that inappropriate. 40% of a large lot is going to feel like a lot of yeah. pavement, potentially. Mm -hmm. Right um, now they have big lawns, I think, the houses that I'm thinking of. There's a lot of variety they have over there. They big lawns. Yeah. A lot of green yeah, space. If you showed your picture again, it shows all the available lot houses. Correct. You found the that bridge that shows the dorms. aerial there? Yeah, the aerial. So, it gives a lot of. Yeah. There's no land in there, I'm sorry to tell you. Okay. <laughs> it's the wrong area. I'm yeah, down in the other <laughs> district. Yes, yeah, the um, there, there. But there is a lot of variety between very small mm -hmm. properties and very. Yeah, so see the. Yeah. Um, the log cabinet, nice guy that owns that. It's, you know, he's got quite an area. Yeah, and you could also, one other thing you could think about is what that coverage looks like. This is total impervious. You could say for buildings as opposed mm -hmm. to, so building, we, we look at impervious from a building coverage perspective and for total coverage perspective. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're okay with sort of maybe a home expansion, but you don't want a giant parking lot built. Right. I mean, I think under that, there's nothing that would stop. This is a very lovely house. I don't want to pick on them, but if they're like, you, you know, all the time. there's a lot. There's a lot of money to be made in the little parking area in the front here. <laughs> they they could do that with that increase. I don't know if there's money to be made there. Probably not, but just to well, maybe they put the parade down there. What's that? Maybe yeah. they put the Fourth of July parade down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's that? Houseboat. Yeah, that's us. Sorry. I didn't well, mean to. We're across the street. That's our view. We're not <laughs> across the street. So, but yeah. I know that's been there all. Yes, all the year. Uh, uh, Kathy, and with that, still there. limit short term <laughs> rentals to a certain extent if you limited parking areas. Practically speaking, maybe from a legislative, I mean, people don't have to check their short term rentals with us. They, they should be checking them with the state because then the building code applies. I don't know if they are, but we have no rental registry at a local level. Right. Um, but you know all the houses in Colchester that are renting. You know, every because time I, I just, think I do, I don't. Oh yeah, um, that, you got, I know, because the, the license plate change every week, so I, I, this I, one, I would notice. I, yeah? This one here, that's a shed? Yeah. 
That's a shed? That's what it's permitted as. Oh, it's not a shed. I mean, I'm sorry to say. So, no, I don't know all they the rentals. They stuck and built that at, at, I guess I would say when you guys weren't looking. Oh, yeah, I watched that for both sides. We're looking now. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah. Neither here nor there. That is technically an accessory structure. And those drive well, except for that one, the, the rest of them, yeah, everybody's going back out. So I think this this is actually a good example of the increased parking area because this one, as I'm looking at it, we just did all that stuff. Six years ago, that was grass. Yeah, um, I, I think isn't there one more lot right there? So this is not. That's a one more lot right there. I think. Right here. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh -huh. But this. These, this is. They a, just did. I think they just put in all that gravel. Yeah, with no reason. permission. But if we clarify the regulations, it would s clarify that they would not be allowed to have permission for that either. Right now, the only thing that would stop them from having a new area there if they applied was their total coverage. <coughs> but if that's a shed with running water and gas hooked up. I mean, where they take the water bill, they party in. I mean, you know, I mean, you're right. I, mean, I won't go into it too much, but. That's right. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> sorry. I'm not going to expect, inspect any of these around. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me get back to our ranks here. Yeah. <laughs> go back up, Kathy. Where would you like to go? Can you go back for all? Yeah. <laughs> Paragraph B starts, so you can change up. Where it says, in the Lakeshore ah. District. Thank you. It's too much copying. Yeah. I should remind myself to check the other one too. This is four. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave. We, we talked about coming back to this green infrastructure for the other one. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to that. Um, okay. Remind me, a lot of these are copied over from LS3. We made some changes. There might be some yet that are more appropriate for four. You changed flat roofs. You changed that one. Oh, yeah. And the discouraged. Right. Isn't there a wood siding or something? Yeah, discouraged. There you go. Um, let's see. We got rid of Pleasant Streetscape. Changed the corner. There was the shingles. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's shingles. Wooden shingles. Mm -hmm. Up above on number five. Change trip to trim. Trip to trim. Mm -hmm. Number five. So all of that, we should also remember. So I also want to point out that this would be a duplicate of 3D. Do you intend for it to be? They're two different areas, though. That's the consideration. Yeah. So I don't mean that to be a leading question. Just I think it's still appropriate. It's still the same neighborhood. I think it's yeah. a nice consistency. Yeah. I mean, at some point, I'll have to enumerate the differences. And if there aren't any, maybe it's just one district. I think there's coverage differences that we might see and height differences. Um, okay. <laughs> Anything else there? Yeah, these aren't final. Come back to them. Um, I'm going to get down to the charts. I think that's the last bit of. <laughs> LS3 and 4. Not all the way there yet. Sorry, touch screen. So in our regulations, if you're familiar with them, 
we have two tables. Table A1 is all about uses. Table A2, <coughs> and I'll zoom in. Um, table A2 is about dimensional standards. So, okay. uses here. Um, I'm going to quickly cover these to say that really the only permitted uses in both of these are residential uses. Um, home businesses are permitted. That is a state statute that requires you to, to requires us to permit home businesses. So this is three four, right? These are three four. Three and four. So that's the red here. Okay. Um, Most people work at. Yes, yeah, so home businesses are different. It's like it allows you to have like an employee. It's a little bit different than just working from home. Um, you'll see this question mark that I have a highlight here. And this is something I really want to talk about tonight to introduce for uh, something to return to. So multifamily dwellings right now we define as anything above two units in a structure. That is a multifamily dwelling. <coughs> and they are allowed in every residential district we have. Um, and so there is some temptation to just put them as a P here. My caution against this that I would like some time to explore is that when we define a multifamily dwelling as more than two, that is all we call it. I'm understanding of conversations we've had that a 20 unit building, yeah. even if the density permits it, is not what you are desiring on either side of East Lake Shore. One fact of the road could not accommodate that. So, tr so without making any changes at all in density, and I, I, let me back up a minute. There's no changes in density that are proposed. This would reflect exactly what exists in R2 today. So if you are, and that's about 10,000 square feet, which is about three units an acre, three to four, less than four, three point something units in an acre. It's very important that there's no changes made to density. That was an agreement with the sewer proposal that there would be no increase or decrease that would be exactly what exists today that is very important in, in, in accommodating that. So there's no changes proposed to that. So that's density, that's how many units you can put on a lot, right? If you have, do the math with me, a 10 acre lot, and you can fit about three and a half units on an acre according. So that's about 35 units. Yeah. So that's what you're guaranteed. How those 35 units are placed, I'm making an educated guess, people care about. You care about whether those 35 units exist in a single building or they exist in some other makeup. What I would propose to you is that I can bring you some ideas of what those makeups are. Um, through residential building typologies. We don't use them right now. Um, I would keep them very simple. I would look for your direction about generally what you would want those to be. So um, I've heard from some folks, there's a six unit condominium that's up the road that sort of exists. Yes, it's great. It's I've heard, flat. I've never heard anything negative about the aesthetic of that, about its placement and character. Um, I mean, that, that's the way they used to have it on the shores. I mean, you know, yeah. Um, but does six units in a single... Are you talking about the brown? The brown ones. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they have a name. I don't that's know. A I don't They're on that big lot. They are. Yeah, the that lot. is a very big yeah. lot. Um, yeah, it goes back to this. I would say that one's kind of in character. Yeah. But to those. What I'm thinking of is a three story yeah. uh, multiplex building. And that's, that's different. They're, yeah. they're the same number of units. And so the only way, I think, to, to address that is to have a building typology that speaks to its um, to a building sort of layout in a broad kind of terms. Um, I've used these 
in other communities that I've worked in, um, in general I received pretty favorable. Um, you go very, very light on any sort of architectural definitions other than the most basic things that help it get defined. So you're not trying to do any form-based coding necessarily. Um, but it does allow you to distinguish between what actually is a multi, other types of multifamily dwellings beyond singles and duplexes. So you'd say you take this uh, 1.300 and divide it up into different types of multifamily? So what I would probably say is that there are these new building types. So you might have um, row house as a building type, townhome okay. as a building type. And you would say what a, you would define what that is. And then you would say that's an allowed building type. You've got two or three areas of like that. You would say. And that would go in this chart. That would go in some chart. I don't, I don't know where it fits. Mm -hmm. But there would be some chart that says these are the allowed building types for LS1 or for LS3 and for LS4. So you might not want a six unit townhouse on the lakeside, but you might not mind it on LS4. We know we don't want a big box, right? Now, could we do it differently and just make instead of a multi-family residence for this area and make it a number? Six units max, or three units max, or? You could. You'd would still have to define, there. so you could give a maximum number of units per building. That would be the simplest solution. It doesn't really get into when you get a little bit, if you wanted to go a little bit higher, it doesn't distinguish between that six unit, I, saw, I call them like slim units, right? right? Condos that don't take up a lot of uh, horizontal distance. Right. They're sort of deeper. Um, it doesn't distinguish between that and a six unit box. So you're allowing for a building like that, which will want a driveway. Well, another entrance and exit off from the station. So you're, if they want another whole, just like like next to me, Churchill was vacant, like you're talking about. They have single dwellings. Yes. They were going to be double dwellings. They could have been, I don't know how many there are. Do you know how many there are? I don't know. Hey, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some are double. They're all doubles except for his. Yeah. One's a triple. So but under. Under the current R2 regulations, if you are allowed those 30 units, we make no distinction between whether those 30 units exist separately or in one big building. So you could limit the height. You could call it 20 feet, but it could be a 20 foot tall, 60 unit building. Um, and I don't think that that's what I heard it as anybody desires. I don't think any of them are able to think of the groups of places that I'm for, are for. There's, I don't know the name is, it's off the road, great place, it's pretty nice looking in the Sandy Shore Terrace, I think. Could be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would see those, I would see that throughout. But those could be eights, twelves. Yeah, but the thing is, they're, they're aesthetic looking, you don't even know they're there. They sit up and back. I mean, it's discreet. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that exists today that people don't like. Okay. I'm, I'm saying that potential is the there. potential is fully there. Yeah, exactly. And then Ray, um, Janet Ray, I think up in back, they got a big construction area going up in there. Yeah, they're just doing another cottage, a single cottage. I'm gonna go pretty far. Yeah, right up. It sounds to me like we need more discussion on this with a little more yeah, information. I, well, because the thing is, I think it's, it's we're going to have growth, and I think it's very important, like you're saying, uh, the dwellings for. Uh, uh, no, the, the, the three side, is there even room to have a multi? The brown one? Block yep. 32. Is that, am I, I haven't gotten to it yet, right? No. Yeah, yeah you're way past it. You're at the corner. It's coming up here? Yeah. Oh, did I pass it? Oh, yeah. 
Turn around. It's <laughs> a bus ride. <laughs> and then the houses at the beginning of there, they could build in their front yard. A little bit more? Yeah. So, I mean, I think what we want to spend some time considering yeah. is what, especially these, oh, here it is. And the giant tree. I think you just passed it. Yeah, oh, I think it's a street sign. I think it says Ridge Hat on it. Let me see if I can see it better from yeah, here. Yeah, but I was going to go through yeah. this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, that one. I think that's that's perfect. If so people, set back like that. people like this. I mean, I they've got the, the, the way they're, they're six in They're not energy efficient, but Sarah likes them. But they've got the porches in the front. And it's, I don't even notice that half the time unless I look up there. But There's that's great for well. background. Yeah, no, but that was right on the street. It probably a different story, but it's so oh, wow. feel different it? mean. And what? if those six were stacked taller, yeah. you might feel differently. Correct. Right. Um, I would. They are three stories. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's well, a big lot right in the back. The road. Yeah. If they were on the road, road, that would be quite daunting. Because yeah. of the background. Yeah. 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 When, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, if so, you go back, I mean, literally are three stories. So I guess what I would say is we want to keep in mind, even if we keep the existing density, which I would strongly encourage you to do, okay. that there are enough large lots that you have the potential for very large buildings. Even if you reduce the heights of buildings, they could still be very large. Um, and I, I don't, I haven't heard from you that that's what you want, so I would, I'd like to continue to work on how to give you some options to address that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be interested in seeing your, your typology. Yeah. yeah. We should do the pictures of just that again if we did. You know, you could get a bunch of pictures of that you would. So right now there's really only, and anything that goes up and down has the maximum of three dwellings. There's, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, East Lakeshore Drive, there's pretty much, if there's one building, there's like three. I mean, there's three people. I mean, that's the maximum. But I've got really high stories. Well, if there's three, there's three apartments in it. It's supposed to be a two apartment, but they. Yeah, so that's limited they, right now by sewer. They, um, they snuck in that would the third change. one and just grandfathered in. Colchester grandfathered it in yeah, instead, of, talking about now. Mm -hmm. instead of taking it back. There's your other cute one that you were talking about there. Um, okay, so let me go back to those charts because there's still more to talk about here. So this is about uses. Really the only thing left to see here I think is that's why I've left the question mark. I think if we don't get to building types, I would encourage you to make this a not permitted until we do. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be allowed on LS3. No. Yeah. I agree with that. So, oh, are you ready to say that you would like to not see it in yeah. LS3? Yeah, just blank it out for now. So, singles and duplexes? Yep. Okay. That definitely is out of character. Nobody wants that so far. Thank you. Right? Great. So. Okay. Yeah. More discussions. More discussions. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. Because I don't think we're affecting the density on any of the properties on LS3 doing this. Correct. That's correct. On no multifamily. Got it. Yep. Great. More discussion on LS4. Okay. Yep. I'm going to um, skip through this. Uh, if you have any comments, just pause, stop me. There's really not much else. No, this is a holdover, this artist production studio as a conditional use. It's like the. I don't know. You can take it, leave it. It's a conditional it? use for it's LS3 awesome. and 4. It's the only non residential use in there. I think that came up before. I left it, but I'm happy to delete it. Quick, delete it. Time's up. That's an artist production studio? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's really a conditional use. I, that means yeah, it's, it's awesome. more scrutiny, right? Yeah, I definitely will have to go to DRB and they will check everything for parking yeah. and the whole bit. Yeah. I don't think it's the worst thing in LS4, but in LS3, I doubt you could scoop one in there. 
Would you like to remove it in LS3? Yes. yes. You guys? Yes. Yeah. Oh, everybody? Hey. Yeah. I Leave it as page four. Are we moving? Sorry. So it's Art an art production studio. Commercial. So you could have yourself a little cottage and you could have your mm -hmm. studio in there. But you could There's also no do retail. On the, on you got a paint and sip every weekend at your house. That's right. Paint, paint and sip. sip. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a sip and paint. You just show up, park someplace. And That's the problem. But you can't have like a coffee shop. On LS4 no. you could. You could. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So You can do the paint and sip on LS4 too. There's something in there about mobile homes. Uh, where, which page? So I'll go back oh, to it. Yeah, yeah, it's permitted. Now. It's uh, yeah. permitted. Yeah. That's state. Yeah, that's a state. There's a state, state mobile home boat. It's part of that. Yeah. yeah. Until yeah. they put the bricks under it, you're fine. <laughs> well, when you say it's, it's um, so mobile homes have to be permitted anywhere the single family residential is. Oh, that's right. Okay, then how come you have mobile home park and the only place that it says permitted is. Those three and those four, I don't get it. I'm sorry, let me is find it. Are daycares allowed? Oh, yes. They're, okay. they're also governed by state regulation. Yeah. I'm sorry, Rebecca, I'm trying to find it. State number 100, single family dwelling. Yeah. <laughs> single family dwelling. Yeah. Single family dwelling. Right there, 1.122 yeah. 1. mobile home park. That's the only place besides MHP we have a permit in mm -hmm. for. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that Good we could. Catch. That can go, right? We can put a mobile home, but we don't need a park. I don't think we need a mobile home no. park in that area. That's no, I'm not the anybody put one there. I don't here, know. I might have to look at all of them, though. Well, the mobile home up above 1.112 is allowed. That's the state requirement. Oh, it's yeah. park. But the Correct. mobile home yeah. park, I just I didn't understand yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's on West Lake Shore Drive. So I deleted that. Okay. So Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Anything else on table A1? We can look at A2. Come on, you guys, look at those real close. We can't see them from here, but <laughs> you guys look at, tell us what's you want me to. On page 230, the next page. Yeah, you I have a question there, right? about oh, yeah. land resident oh, development yeah. allowed in LS3. So that would be 1.8. Uh, yep, yeah, got it. I don't know if we need more discussion on that. Um, 1.8. I just didn't think there was any room on LS3 to do that. Yeah, I mean, there's still a three acre threshold. So I don't think it would be. We could change any, it. I don't think, I don't think there's anything that would be allowed. I don't think there's any three acre property, is there? Do you think we should go over each of these and like look at them? Just to get more informed about what we're saying, you know, can be permitted and what would need conditional permitting. I'm pretty good with it. You are. I think if we delete it, yeah, it has so. almost no impact. We could delete it for the home business. No, no, no we're talking oh, about planned residential these. development. Planned residential oh, okay. development. Okay, I didn't see it to slide for LS three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a size threshold anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. no brainer. I don't think it needs to be in there. Yeah, it can pop out. Yeah. Would you like to leave? I think you want to leave it for four. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to jump in. What did you leave for four? What was the plan development? A plan okay. development. So got, yeah, yeah. Basically, it allows you to have more than a single unit on a lot. You know, the biggest thing is about putting any Commercial Yeah, and I don't think I have any listed. Um, mm -hmm. It's the type of thing that if there's ever a desire, I, you would want to talk about it specific just to that, and you would probably also want to go back to building typology. So if you do say, hey, we'd love a tiny corner store, but it has to meet X, Y, and Z, you'd want to spend time on, mm -hmm. on that. You're talking uh, LS4. Because there's already a commercial building that has potential there. Yeah. yeah. So I have 
have included and I think it's too much to bite off for this. Yeah. If yeah. you want to do it, I would do it after. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Anything else on this table? No. I'll let you think on that while I open the other one. Yeah, there's, so this one's all about uses. The other table is about dimensional standards. So that's where the heights are. Oh, okay. So um, I talked to Rich a little bit about this already. Um, let's get down to the bottom here. LS3 and 4. Um, Mary building height. I wanna I wanna scroll enough so you can see it, but I wanna be out just enough so you can see the top yep. row as well. Um, so 20 feet is listed in here. Um, it's a number that exists in LS1 and 2. It's a number that was listed a lot in some public comments. What I would tell you is that 20 feet is a very odd number, and, and this is why. Um, 20 feet on a flat land does not get you two stories in a pitched roof. Does that sound right? That sounds right. right. Um, on top of that, if you were to add in where we measure from, so building heights in Colchester are measured from average pre-construction grade. So anything that is built into a, a slope, which most of the properties on the lake shore are, you start your building height down the slope and you're measuring up from there. So a 20 foot height is not 20 feet at the road. It's 20 feet from where you start measuring from, which could be eight, 10, 12 feet below the road grade. So if your intention is to include something akin to two stories, 20 feet is not tall enough. If your intention is to include something that's one story, 20 feet will get you there and only there. Um, but it could be one story at the street level and two story at the... Like, I think it could. I, th I think so. What do you think? The grades. I, I think some of those grades. You, know. you could do 20 with a pitched roof into those grades maybe. But I don't think that was our intent, so, but, but if, you could, yeah. if you change it and have your intent as a two-story in the street view, you could actually end up with a three-story on the lake view, so you can think of that, too. So I would yeah. think of what you want, generally speaking, and then right-size the number. Um, 20 feet is not a two-story building on the street. I don't, I don't think in any case is it a two-story, even on flat land, it's not two stories with a pitched roof. And this goes back to what Bob was bringing up earlier about 20 feet is two stories with a flat roof if you're built on grade. Does that sound? You could probably do 20 yeah, feet with yeah, a flat roof. Yeah, it's, uh, can I ask a question? On the LS3 side, can we use the so many feet above the high water mark to start measuring heights of buildings? Um, Oh, don't send me out to inspect a building and have to find out where the high water mark is and measure from there. Bring somebody with you. Yeah. Um, Just the thought process of that would so be. So we already look at that. Everybody, with, no matter how they want to do this or that, it would all be on the same playing field. But the road isn't. Yeah, the road isn't. Yeah, no, that the is the problem. Going. Roads up and down. Yeah, there's some three. It gives a starting point for the top. I, mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. To, ship, to the hollow. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That would so, be so. I mean, I, I think your first conversation should really be what are we looking for generally? One story or two? And let's find the number that works from there. I think we need to visit the road again. I know. So you could, and, and I've talked to at least a few people yeah. about this. They say, what about just, what about stories? Let's forget about a number, let's talk about stories. It is a viable option. I think it comes with pros and cons. When you're talking about stories, it does allow you to sort of get to where you want to be without having to drop a tape. But you have to be very careful in how you're defining a story. 
So if you do talk about a story, you're always going to have someone saying, this isn't a story. It's, it's just, you know. Right. My, uh, my split level or my raised ranch, that's not a story. It half's above ground, half's above. So if you do want to go by stories, it'll take a little extra time because we have to be very, very careful on how so we define the big story. concern is... And some towns and places will do stories, and there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Right. The big but, concern here was the visual from the road. Yeah. So how, um, much, how much house do we want to see from the road? Make put a house happy. on two stories of right. stilts and then build a two-story house. Right. Right. So you've got to be very careful when you talk two stories. Right. They just did that. They just raised two homes, East Lake Shore Drive. Yeah. They just raised them. So when they were doing that, what did you tell them? So that was a flood-proofing exercise, yeah. But there's a few more down there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and also, oh, okay. the other thing I would point out as you're considering that is that we've got this 20 feet listed for LS3 and 4. I haven't heard from you that that's what you want either. I think that there was more comfort with more height in LS4 than there was for LS3. Right. Yeah. We have a comment for right ahead. Yeah, that was my comment. Like, yeah. on the LS4 side, I don't see any reason to change the height. Only the LS3 side, the lake view impact side. You know, when it gets down to the, you talk about protecting the public good, preserve the lake view. That's like the overriding. Thing. Yeah. And I think that reflects what absolutely. what I've heard. So. Yep, absolutely. These are discussion points. I don't think either of the numbers is right. I really, yeah. I really don't. Um, so should we start with LS3? Do you want to talk about it more tonight? No. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> you sure about play? What do you mean? Can you, can you pass the cookies to Bob? Yeah. Get the cookies cookie. to Bob. You want to come back to this? Well, Would you feel comfortable, just so we're going to put another draft out there. Um, I'm hearing, at least I, I think I'm hearing, that the 20 feet for LS4 is not right. No. Are you good with 40? That's what's allowed in LS2 now. Or, or sorry, not LS2, R2. The district that it currently exists in is 40, is 40 feet. Yeah, that's three story. Three story. That's Williams Road, that's suburban. Sure. But Colchester. our question is from the road, how do we you've gotta you've gotta build it. If you get three stories, correct? We don't want the three stories from our road. So LS4 is largely flat. I think most of those properties. Oh, I th we're talking LS4 now. I'm, I'm trying to get to the easy one first. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I, that's. I like yeah, the yeah. I thought LS4. she said. LS4. Okay, LS4. Okay. No, yeah, I, no problems with that. Whatever yeah. works. I know it's going on my track too. Yeah. 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 You want to build up. You want to be able to see the lake see view. Yeah. LS4 is, I mean, they'll want to build so you can see the lake. I get yes. that. So, what is 20 feet? But the taller you build across the street, the taller you build on the hill. Forty feet? Yeah, like definitely. We're all shaking our heads on forty. Any more public comment on forty feet? Yay. <laughs> that works. That works. That works. Yeah. <laughs> so that's in keeping with yeah. most R2 throughout the town. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And we do measure those again from average pre construction grade to peak. At some point we'll want to talk about what that does for flat roofs. Mm -hmm. measure what? Yeah. I'm sorry, what you so we measure to the peak. Okay. Um, some communities will measure halfway up. They'll measure the difference between the, which I think gets halfway between the bridge and the peak. Yeah. yeah, which creates less of a difference between a flat roof and a pitched roof yeah. in terms of mm -hmm. quality yeah. and measuring. Yeah. For right now, we measure to the. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. Okay. In those the three, the, two, the, the three that are, or the four, three, four, four, are those 40? That's 40. The two on three. The two tall ones on three. You measure from the grade. That's I know. Slope. Which ones are we talking about? So you're about? talking about LS. Oh, oh on the lake side. I'm just talking three to say, like, in, in, yeah. example would be that's 40. Yeah, they hit 40. I'm pretty sure, or maybe they were like 39 and a half. Well, that's what they're going to look like in four. Do we want those in four? Do we want to have those in four? Yeah, exactly. We're fine with that. So I'm going to leave that. The 40% coverage, 
is carried over. Yep. Um, the density, that's that first column. Um, one per, oh, 20,000 square feet, sorry. So that's about two on an acre. Right. Hmm. Um, that might be a typo, bear with me here for a minute. We need it to reflect R2. Okay, R2 is one per 20,000 square feet. Dep give or take, depending on whether or not you have a community sewer system. Um, road frontage, same as in LS1 and 2. Um, those, of course, get modified if you're in a PUD. Do you want to... Setbacks. I'm just wondering, do you want to make a different number with setbacks so the houses are in the road now that we're getting a sewer system and we don't have to put our sewer systems in the back of our houses? Do you want to... Um, I mean, mine's already there, but I can't remember anything. But I'm just saying, do you want to treat the houses a little bit farther away from the road? So, or do you want to leave them as close to the road as they are yeah, existing now? You want to leave the footprint pretty I much? I think it's a, it's a great question. I think on LS3, any number you put is not going to matter because most people are building and their footprints. Yes. LS4 is where you're going to see an impact. Right. 15 feet, kind of short. For a new build. In the For a new build. Do you, I could, Bob's looking tired. Could flag <laughs> this one for next time. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it is for RS2. Uh, I can tell you. Let's see. Well, that's commercial. 30 feet. No, right, so R2, 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 Yes. Highlight this, yep. so we uh, return to it. We're pretty sh there's some agreement that maybe 15 feet is too short. Okay. Yep. That was again for commercial. No. Well, well, you're no, highlighting the side, not at the front. Could you open? You have 20 door? feet for the front. Am I in the wrong one? The side, the side yard. Sorry. The 20 now. Yeah. 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 Yep. 20 feet really isn't that much either. No. You can get one mm -hmm. car apart. Yeah, yeah no, that's what you've got to consider. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. But it is late, so <laughs> we'll so mark this as come back to yeah. and have a more substantive conversation. So, sure. so if you if he's saying it's illegal to pull into the street, back into the street, then do you want to say we want the bill to have the driveway in the back? I mean, if you don't want us back in it. Well, no, the objective is to yeah. go past yeah. your driveway and you back into it. You know, pulling your driveway and back out in the traffic is the legal way to pull in and pull out of a driveway. Okay. So there might be some good conversation to be had there. I think I would probably put that as a let's let's do the this stuff and get it adopted, okay. and then maybe come back and have that conversation, but be. But maybe do it after this is at least in place for the rebuilds. Okay. For rebuilds, okay. I mean that's the really rebuild. like the haste yeah, right okay. now. All right. All right. Maybe there's a part two, three, four. Um. Okay. Are we are we good there for now? Yeah. I'm gonna come back to this. I think I've got a little homework. Yeah. Okay. You got other things to do. Yeah. Yeah. But there, they'll go faster. Yeah. Anything else on East Lakeshore before? No, because I had this citizens to be heard, but it was he says well, skip me. No, we can still do this. <laughs> so yes. We just got you want more than this? No, I just <laughs> just wanted to make my speech. Absolutely. Okay, I had it's Phyllis Brighton's literature. But I just wanted to make I guess two points as long as I'm, I got the stage. Um, I wanted to represent um, the tonnage on East Lakeshore Drive. Uh, right now it's 20, and I'd like to get it down to 16. Um, we are still looking ahead at no commercial on that road, um, so I don't need uh, commercial trucks coming through East Lake Shore Drive. The road can't take it, the houses can't take it because they're shaking. And um, So that, that would be into the select board world, just so you know. 
Oh, we okay. can't do anything about the road itself. No, it's not a road. No, it's not even a 127. It's been taken off. What's that? Yeah, absolutely glad. That's not my problem. That's a hundred percent slack board. Keep that speech. Bring it right to them. Okay, I'll keep that speech. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and then I I can't bring up the public swimming pool at all, right? That's nothing to do with you guys. Yeah. Oh, that's that's yeah, you're right. That, okay, yeah, sorry. that's not us either. Sorry about Bye. that. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate right. it. I just wanted to make sure you got those two points. Yep, that's awesome. I'll put it Thank in the middle. It's been along with riches. All right. right. Back out. So, that's it for us for East Lake, right? Free, I, I, that's it. it is as long as you want it to be. I think we're good, right? Do we have anything left to do on it, as far as you're concerned? There's kind of this time. Right? There's, there's still some to do. Well, had a warning of public hearing. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. I mean, the only thing I we have minutes to approve? Yeah, we yeah. will. Yeah. Nothing was no, to add. We're to really going to start on that. Is those little bit of properties that are in LS1 and LS2, are they more appropriate to LS3 and LS4? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm right. Yeah, I have a feeling we might want to revisit LS1 and 2 at some point. Yeah, yeah everything has to be You'll do that, yeah. detailed. Yeah, we want to do that now and hold up some of the other things. And yeah, yeah. That's something we come back to. So, all right. So given the time and what we have left, what we'll need is a motion to table 5, correct? Um, may I look real quick just to make sure there was nothing? Time sensitive? Well, just something that I didn't want direction that I could work on okay. between now and the next sure. meeting. <coughs> Sorry. How many tabs? Where's the agenda? Um, we're organizational. You guys have actually done B. I just that's just referencing that. Verification, dimensional standard, accessory structures, so that'll take a conversation. Uh, D is a text change. E <coughs> is a discussion. F is just a text change, G is a text change, H is a text change, I barely more than a text change, J pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing I would add in, and I can work with Rich directly on this, is we talked about the commercial vehicle parking standards. <coughs> Rich was going to help me to def better define the the size of a small commercial vehicle. Um, so that might be something I work on between now sure. and the next draft. Yep. Um, I mean, unless there's a question somebody has on five that you want it now. Is it more numbers of vehicles as opposed to time? Yeah, we're, so on that one, I was thinking we'll go back to what, we should go back to where we had it. Get it at one and mm -hmm. change the size of the vehicle. The vehicle is about a pickup truck. We should put it into the more of a size of a usable commercial okay. vehicle. Nothing huge, but yeah, yeah something like so it. There were two pieces to it. There was the number and the size. Yeah. Okay. The draft you have in front of me, in front of you, goes back to the very original with a definition of commercial. But we could fix that even more. I guess is what I'm saying. So. Yeah. Um. Nothing else. I can't wait. Okay, perfect. Minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to adjourn. No. Do we need to nope. weigh Hold up. up. Hold up. up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not supposed to weigh in on that. <laughs> what you need? Go ahead. A couple things. A, we need to set. Uh, next meeting dates. Oh, I they're did not set. on the bottom. I am sorry. And two. I want to uh, make sure since we have this conversation going, you guys received it in your packet, but just I want to formally enter into the record that there was a, a letter submitted to you. I do have hard copies for anyone who wants it, but it is in the packet from Rick Davy and Anita Davy with mm -hmm. some comments. So it is a bit long to read into the record. It is available, but I do want it announced into the record as having been received. Do you guys all have a copy of that? Yes. Yes. Um, I do have hard copies for anyone who wants to see I'll it. Take a hard copy with me as well. Yeah.
Um, what I have promised people and I want to continue to promise people is that any way they are providing comments, email, phone calls, no matter what they are, we are going to be 100% receptive and transparent about them so that people can feel comfortable sharing. I, I thought it was a good one. Um, so anyone who doesn't have it, it, it is in your Dropbox. Yep, I got it. Yes. And I think it's also on the website. Okay. Um, next meeting dates. Yes. Um, your normal scheduled meeting for July is the day after the fourth. I think you'd agreed previously not to do that meeting date. Correct. Um, I don't even have recommendations for you. Uh, Tuesdays are going to be hard without holding off quite a bit. You have to be looking at. Your next meeting, if you went with it, Tuesday would be the 19th. Sure. Do you, do you want to go out that far? Are you good? Probably. We're talking about July. July. Yeah. yeah. Your only other choice is to say uh, the, fifth. the fifth is too close to the holiday, but the sixth or seventh is fine. I don't know. Yeah. You could pick a day other than Tuesday. Are there other meetings on Wednesday? Uh, Wednesdays is development sure. review, but I think they're on the second Tuesday. Second. So the sixth. Thursdays are always open. Thursdays, I think, are always open. I don't know, making a recommendation do I just. Show yeah. me an email. The twelfth will not work. The fifth is a bad date. The twelfth is a select board meeting. So, Thursday or no? With that one, start I'm, with that. I'm fine with a Thursday meeting. I don't like that. So I, I got to find out for sure. I would okay. be fine. What's the date? So on why don't we Thursday? commit so, to so. at least the 19th? Okay. If there is a date sooner, we will probably we're technically required 48 hours, but we will announce that ASAP. Okay. So I'll follow up with you guys just to pull you on your schedule. Okay. So there's some potential. It sounds like maybe for. Seven. That sound right? Mm -hmm. It can be minimal. I, I may not be able to make it. Uh, yeah, I may not. I, gotta, okay. I have to look up too. I got to make sure. Um, I think going to a different day the following week doesn't save you much. No. So if you don't do it the, the seventh, I wouldn't do it again until the nineteenth. Yeah. Okay. Sounds fair. Good. And then back. Sounds fair. Do we have minutes to sign? On we do. Um, actually, I think we just ran through it. <laughs> You sure? Okay. Just we'll see. What's that? Do you want to table that or do you want to call that running through this? Number five. We'll leave them all listed anyway, just for anyone who wants to weigh in as we go. Okay. I'll just I'll keep the list. Okay. I don't think okay. there's any benefit to shorting it. Okay. Sounds good. So I'll have to show up again on the public hearing anyway. So. Yeah, that's right. Okay. We're good. Updates? Um, and would you like a draft for the 19th that's ready for a warning for a public hearing? It's not the actual public hearing, it's just. It's okay to say no. I, I think. I, I feel like I need a little bit more time. Okay. So maybe we do the 19th um, and August 2nd? Yeah. So August 2nd is a potential warning? Yes. We should be able to roll and that would be yes. for September, so just walking through this for anyone who's trying to follow. If you warn on August 2nd, you'd be looking at an August... Days. You'd be looking at a, like a September 13th public hearing. Yep. I think it's a little later than we were thinking, but... Okay. Yeah. This is what it is. So I'd rather take a little bit more time and be pretty confident yeah. in what we're deciding. Absolutely. I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So but maybe see you July nineteenth. Thank you so much. That's it, update. That's all you need. Minutes. We got the oh, minutes. We're no, I have start. one quick update on Chapter 4. What's that? Chapter 4 updates were approved by the select board. There you go. I'm done.
<laughs> okay. Egress windows now required in basements. Permit requirements have or will be changed from a $2,500 threshold to a $15,000 threshold. Um, with a little bit more included than was included before. You didn't need a permit for a roof before, now you do. But the threshold is much, much higher. What do you mean? You mean right, so right. if you have to... Wait, so it again? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I didn't know if you wanted me to go fast. Not that fast, I suppose. It's <laughs> from 2,500 to 15,000. So speaks to what requires a building permit, okay. not a zoning permit, a building permit. Okay. Um, it had been $2,500 was the threshold for a lot of work. Certain things were excluded, but the list was really complicated in figuring out what was excluded and what wasn't. Okay. The adopted language changes that to basically any interior renovations, okay. but the threshold is much higher. It's fifteen thousand dollars of work now, Perfect. not twenty five hundred. So Perfect. it'll exclude a lot of kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels. Yeah, um, a lot of that stuff was requiring a permit that would not be one anymore. Perfect. That's a change that will be effective. Do I need a question for less than 15,000? <laughs> 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 All right. Mr. Shep. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.